egg decide to come back online? Yeet it is then. Alright, I wonder if uh, Giz is going to join or if he's just going to, you know, browse or whatever. Let's see, let me pull up my notes for last session and see what I can remember. Because I think all of you were headed towards the silk farm. You, uh, uh, oh yeah, because you guys all fought some uh, bandits who had some moth eaters and some chains. You met some deep gnomes, uh, and uh, so far you have uh, uncovered that uh, drow were posing as normal elves wearing makeup. So far you've only met the males. Um, you've uh, uncovered the whole, like, underground deep gnome society, um, which you can visit at any time. They appear to just live underground. And uh, there's a wide variety of moth eaters that keep attacking you. I honestly think there's something going on with those drow now. Like, I mean, come on. They have all those goddamn moth eater corpses. Only one of them apparently can't truly die. And they're hiding their identity. So as the uh, the two of you are wandering towards the silk farm, uh, about a uh, a couple hundred feet from the entrance of this uh, gated community, um, you see a uh, a man spear fishing by a waterfall, and you see that this waterfall is part of a natural barricade um, that protects this town. And wherever there's not a natural cliff, there is a uh, a wooden wall to uh, you know fill in the gaps. It's about uh, 25 feet high in all, protecting this town from the outside. Damn. Wait. Is this... Fuck, what is that waterfall called? Everest or no slipshit? Garden? Oh, uh, no, just maybe remember, like, a actual real life waterfall it's like a freaking wall barrier and it's very popular in the you're talking about like the how the hoover dam is basically a um a waterfall powered um plant yes <laughs> no niagara falls my god well I, uh, I'm still waking up. All right, so there's a um, about 25 feet worth, uh, worth of wood or stone protecting this town from the outside. They're kind of on this elevated platform. There is a, um, a large lake feeding the waterfall that the silk farm is next to. Um, you can see that there is a drawbridge, or like a uh, rope bridge, that is currently rolled up at the top of the 25-foot uh, plateau that the city rests upon. And you can see a moth folk man uh, with, a, with a, bu a bundle of spears by his side trying to uh, spearfish and catch fish as they fall down the waterfall and into the river below. Do we approach Godazar? Um, the it, you're uh, flanked by dense forest on either side. There's a well-trodden path. Um, like uh, hundreds and hundreds of footprints must pass through this path um, on any given day. And you can also see cart marks going to and from, all of which stop right below the uh, rope bridge. Um, you can tell by um, the frequency of cart marks that this is probably a trading hub, but they force everyone to stop at this steep plateau.
Ooh. Interesting. Do you uh, tell your ally about the dream you had? Understood. Um, uh, so you can either attempt to climb the uh, the steep plateau uh, using either an acrobatics or an athletics check. Um, you can call out and try to get someone's attention at the top of the um, uh, at the top of the rope bridge. See if someone's willing to throw it down, or you can talk to the moth folk who was spearfishing. Also keep in mind you have a uh, tiger, your little mothful companion, is still like six feet tall and out of his cage. And he's just uh, rummaging around looking for uh, plants to eat. Oh my god. Fast is gonna walk up to the bridge, just kind of call out to somebody going, Hello there. Um, uh, you, uh, two moth folk guards, um, uh, carrying large, uh, spears with hooked tips. Um, they almost look like tools as much as they are spears, and they sort of, uh, Stand on either side of the uh, rope bridge and look down and be like, Who goes there? Be you merchants? No, we are escorts from the Princess Azure Toadpath. If you are on the business from the princess, let's see those badges. I'm going to show my badge on my, uh, world. You see them, them uh, pull out some uh, telescopes uh, so they can closely investigate those badges without descending the 25 feet. They say, eh, looks authentic. May as well. Friend of the princess is welcome here. Let's hope this war ends eventually. And they uh, throw the uh, rope bridge down so that you can climb up. I start ascending. As you get uh, higher and higher above the uh, rope bridge, the um, and you kind of get over the roar of the water ball, waterfall, you can hear shouting and, and jeering in the uh, town hall, but you can't immediately see what's going on as these uh, uh, bizarrely arranged random houses are kind of blocking your view. It doesn't look like this how this city was arranged on purpose in like a, a a grid. It looks like houses just kind of sprouted up one by one over time. So, are you just uh, passing through, or do you have some business uh, uh, around here? Vastor's going to look at the moth folk and go, uh, passing through for the time being. And we kind of hit a dilemma with our package as he looks over to Tiger. Oh, that's strange. That looks vaguely like the, um, uh, the moth queen's uh, pet moth, but it's far too large. It is. It happened to be a specific flower. That is Tiger? What happened? He was fed a flower that had a enlarge spell ability on it. I'm not sure if Queen Mori would love that or hate that. 
Uh, but I think it's best to bring him back down to normal size uh, before you bring him over. Let's not risk another outburst. He should be fine. He'll turn back to his normal self in several hours. It's a 24-hour effect. Yes, yes. Spellcasters are, uh, uh, can go wild sometimes. Not always the most, um, consistent bunch. Um, as they, um, escort you, uh, deeper into the, uh, the uh, town, you get, um, farther and farther away from the uh, roar of the waterfall, and you're, uh, able to see that there's a large crowd gathered in the town, uh, center. Uh, you can see people, uh, shouting and uh, screaming and there is a um you can hear this booming voice uh uh mumbling his voice almost drowned out by the jeers of the crowd do you investigate what's going on or do you pass through the town Basher is gonna look over to the moth folk and ask, "So, what's with all the commotion?" Um, you uh, most of the people are too busy shouting at what's going on in the center, but there's a small child who's uh hopping up trying to get a better view, and he turns around. He's like, "They found a heretic. He's going to be branded." Do. This is out of character, but this this is this will be fun. And I was still kind of talking to the people by the bridge. I didn't realize we already moved from our spot, but yep. Well, a heretic, you say? Huh. They um. Sorry about the wait. No um, uh, so as they uh, as you uh, push through the crowd to get a better look, you see a um, uh, there is a uh, drow with a uh, uh, white paint around the edges of their face, and their uh, his face is uh, wet. It looks like they've washed the face paint off, and you can see a uh, who is very clearly the leader around here. He's got this very uh, regal red and violet cape which he swooshes around dramatically and he's got a heretic's brand in his hand which is currently on fire and he says uh he shouts out to the crowd the word of god is what you trust so thank god she speaks through me and then he um uh brands the drow uh in the uh, the chest and the drow shrieks in agony and he just pushes it further and further true trying to work his way to the through the heart. Uh, hearing that from that one guy, I'm going to approach and go, what is the one true God's name? The crowd says in unison, in an uncomfortably monotone voice, Votismos. The uh, drow is a, uh, as the brand punctures through the chest ca ca uh, cavity and scorches the heart, the drow falls down dead. And they, he says, bring out the next heretic! And you see Flutter being uh, bound with chains, being dragged by her antenna and thrown onto the ground. Flutter? Like, we, do we know Flutter? What? The merchant, the communist merchant you met earlier. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. This heretic wants to bring revolution to our peaceful, kind-hearted town, and she will be punished. You see Flutter looks over at you guys and she says, help me! And Gozar, you uh... suddenly have a flashback to the dream you had.
Yeah, it does look like an execution, doesn't it? Out of character, I'm trying to like figure out how to rationally approach this as a character, but also as a player, because there's only two of us and you, we have the two NPCs, so it's like, what to do? You clearly have misread her books, fake believer! Holy war is the only war, a justified war, a war to purge the world of heretics. That is the word of God, and she speaks through me. Can I roll an insight check on this bastard? Absolutely. Photismos, of course. I hear her calling directly into my mind. Every day. Every night. Her words grace me. That's not going to help me at all. Do, do, do. With a nine, the most you can tell is that he is at, at the very least passionate about his belief. Too passionate. Her voice is as soft as a fluttering uh, moth in the breeze. It's so peaceful. It's the only peace I get. Uh, yes, that does actually match what you uh, the voice that you heard in your dream. But in your dream, she did not tell you to go around rounding up heretics and branding them to death. In fact, quite the opposite. Damn it, I forgot I'm not playing with Shira. Shira's the one that's good at get, gathering intel. Bachelor is so fucking offensive. Me. You do not question the will of Fortismos. Uh, going based off any, uh, like, public knowledge that our characters would know, would we know that uh, either the Azure Princess or the Moth Queen herself actually approve of something like this? Um, you have first-hand experience that um, whoever the local priest is is pretty much regarded as the end-all, be-all authority. And yet, despite them all claiming to hear messages directly from the one true God, their messages vary wildly. Like you saw in the previous town, they were he was uh, using his uh, uh, alleged connection to God to sell literal snake oil. So that's not going to help me at all. You do remember that you do have uh, Flutter's dust on your person. Oh, because <laughs> I was like, I'm not questioning her, I'm questioning. She speaks through me. You cannot question my motives without questioning God's. All right, uh, the uh, the priest and the people get uh, um, 
progressively less and less interested in what you have to say and increasingly more motivated to see this alleged heretic burn. You're going to have to uh, intervene or let things play out because this conversation is not productive. Well, it's just the two of us, and we're, like, limited to what we could do. You do have Flutter's to... Dust, remember? Yes, but that will only probably cause problems, because if we uh, poof her over to us, it's going to cause them to look at us more. Ugh. I'll have my hand dipped in some of that dust in case, like, they try to execute her just to kind of bail her out. But I don't know what else to do outside of that. I'm trying to find a diplo diplomatic approach to that. Well, think about the situation. Think about what these people believe and what they're motivated by. What do you think would talk them out of it? I might have something, but I'm not a very deceptive person. Let's see how this goes. Go to Zara, because if you are not what you say, we should... We should do this to you? Oh, we should do this to you. Uh, you can absolutely make a uh, religion check to um, uh, see if you can't get some sort of connection to your god. You're ready to go with that religion check. What's that, an 18? All right. So um, with an 18 religion check, you you see a glittering diamond moth just sort of apparate from nowhere and start uh, fluttering around. You see the uh, people are entranced and everyone kneels before the diamond moth. And the moth does land on your finger. If I am who I say I am, I have to do the same. <laughs> of course, a parlor trick. It's nothing that something like me, a true believer, can't do. Watch and learn. I'm going to roll religion. Oh, looks like gotta see. And mm. with a whopping seven, he holds out his own finger and nothing happens. You now have advantage on any persuasion checks you would like to make. Nice. So if I were to use this dust, would it just not only would it call her to like where I throw the dust up, could it like make her bamf out, period? Or just... Uh, I don't know the full the extent of the dust. So the last time you scattered dust, she was sucked out of a, a previous conversation, like mid-sentence, didn't even realize that she had been summoned, and it appeared to have been instantaneous. Alright, and she just... She bamfed herself after that whole uh, interaction with her. To bamf herself out, she had to scatter the dust herself. There's still that somatic component to the spell. Okay. So she needs to be able to bamf herself out. All right, got it. Which she cannot do, because she is currently uh, bound and chained. I still have a plan. This will, like, 
especially with that advantage, uh, this will definitely play to it, but right now I just gotta wait. Alright, so I do see what you see, uh, what you wrote, Gozar. I get that you're trying to make an epic speech, but uh, what are you asking them to do? Okay, you see the, uh, your, uh, your audience is captive. They are paying attention, but they're not about to abandon their faith and, or abandon their leader right here, right now. Uh, and a, uh, your, uh, impassioned, lofty speech about peace and harmony has been heard and possibly even swayed a couple of hearts, but, uh, everyone, uh, still appears to be standing strong next to their leader. All right, so what I'm doing is that if he goes in to try to kill her, I'm going to drop the dust behind Vash, behind myself to be able to bamf her right next to me. And I'm basically going to imply that this is the will of Fatismos. Sounds like a plan. You see, uh, um, you see the uh, leader of the people say, Ignore them and their tricks! And he, uh, he, uh, thrusts the, uh, burning brand directly into Flutter. And before he hits her flesh, I'm dropping that dust. So are you, like, scattering that beside you, or are you trying to, like, sneakily, uh, sprinkle it behind you? I'm trying to, like, sneakily scatter it behind. In a uh, poof of glitter, a uh, flutter appears behind you. The the people were all looking at the uh, execution, and they just see uh, their leader thrust the the brand, and they watch as the uh, the victim just sort of apparates out of existence in a poof of glitter. Uh, and they do not see her appear behind you. And uh, flutter isn't about to give herself away. She clings to your back and hides, folding in her wings as tightly as possible. I hand her the dust, some of the dust, and basically say, Don't make me regret this. She whispers into your ear, The revolution will not forget this. And she uh, uh, throws the bag of dust into the air towards the uh, lake, and as it disperses into the water, she poofs into the lake and starts swimming below the surface and out of trouble. As she's gone, Vastra goes kind of steps forward and says this apparently is the will of Fatismos. She was not meant to die. Make a persuasion check with advantage. That's what we got. If I roll low with that advantage, I'm going to be pissed. Natural 20. Nice. Uh, uh, loud and uh, confused murmurings run throughout the crowd. The, um, the moth folk uh, priest and, uh, slash cleric uh, looks like he's uh, panicking as his people start uh, muttering. You know, he didn't really know the, the, the word of Fotismos? Was he lying? And, you know, uh, words of discontent and mistrust start echoing through the crowd. Let me make an intelligence check for this man, actually. Um, you see, um, uh, the uh, the cleric uh, folds his hands and says, "Thank you for all coming to my demonstration. Did you all enjoy the show?" Uh, <laughs> I'm going to roll persuasion. Oh, that son of a bitch! Nat twenty. Fuck oh, him! A loud oh echoes through the cr the 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 crowd, and there is a roaring of applause. 
that drowns out Gozar as he attempts to uh, order the man to step down. People come up and uh, shake your hands and like, wow, what a great performance. You really had me going. I, I was going to say, should he get disadvantaged? But honestly, the, this is too interesting. The, the, the fact that he turned the tables on us. Jesus Christ. Um, you see the uh, the uh, uh, cleric walk over to you. Vashtari puts his arm around it, your sh uh, your shoulder like you've been best bunnies your whole, whole life. And he goes, my name is Fabron, by the way. And I run things around here. And if you ever question my authority again... No one will ever find the body, he says, as he pushes his uh, clawed, insectoid hand into your jugular. Then he gives you a good pat on the back and uh, uh, wanders back into the crowd as everybody starts to wander on home. Before he leaves, the Vashtar grabs his arm and basically says, I can say the same about you, friend. I, after all, I am a very powerful mage. No one will definitely find your body when it disintegrates to ash. Make an intimidation check. Damn, that's the one thing I'm not proficient in. I should have had that as a proficient. I love it, it's not going to do much. He pats you on the shoulder and goes, You can certainly try. Alright, if you would like to pray to Fortismos, make a religion check to see if you get any sort of intelligible response. Uh, uh, you hear a whispering in your ear that only you can hear. Still can't believe that bastard fucking turned the tables on this guy. And with that, the um, uh, the diamond moth flutters out of view as if out of existence itself, and people go back to their day-to-day -day posts. Um, so the uh, um, the the cleric has revealed himself to be a man by the name of Fibroin, and he returns to the church. And you see that there are um uh, multiple um. Uh, you know, shops and silk vendors. And as people sort of disperse and give you a clear view of the town, you can also see that there is a a massive, like, two-story tall tower, and you can hear crawling and, uh, like, buzzing inside of it. Crawling and buzzing? What is this, like, a huge-ass beehive? The, um, uh, um, Fibroin grabs his spear with his banner on it, whooshes his cape, and, uh, goes, uh, and, uh, dramatically goes back to his, uh, church, uh, you know, winking and chatting with people as he goes, the wind blowing his, uh, banner and his cape dramatically. He appears to have completely retained his status. I hate him. So you can go to the church, you can go to the market, you can um, go to the uh, this strange buzzing structure, or you can continue on your way. Um, I think I'm going to go to the market. I want to see if they have any magic books or maybe some something I can purchase. All right. As you go to the uh, the market stalls, there's um, 
one vendor in particular that has the largest stall and the most amount of customers, and he's got his goods and services uh, clearly printed on a uh, sales board next to his stall. And uh, uh, you, uh, you hear him call out silk and silk based goods and a couple of uh, miscellaneous goods I've found along the way. Come on, come on. And he says, uh, as a uh, child walks by, he picks up the uh, uh, broken axe blade, which has this sort of violet glitter to it. And he's like, hey, look at this. Wouldn't you like to hang it on your wall? He's like, cool. 250 gold pieces. The kid goes, no, and just kind of walks <laughs> away. The only item that he typically sells that he's currently sold out of is a polymorph potion, which he has crossed out with a red line. That's not curious at all. Um, as you go up to the merchant and ask him why that's uh, sold out, he goes, Oh, there was some... Uh, uh, Creepy looking elven fellow that bought my entire stock. I think he was a sorcerer of some kind. I don't know why he needed 20 polymorph potions, but hey, I'm not about to question him. He had the money, and I'm not about to turn down a sale. Did he give a name? Uh, not that I can remember. He was a pretty shady individual. Didn't do a lot of talking. Kind of just pointed at the the menu and said, I want all of them, in a creepy voice. Oh, the character. Um, oh. <laughs> God damn it, I know who it is. Fast, I was gonna go. Did he say why, or did he just take them and pay you? Well, he didn't say why, but he did have a have a handful of uh, other elves with him. And you know what's interesting is I don't really see a lot of elves this far uh, close to the Mothfolk Kingdom. He didn't say what it was for, but he gave one to each of his men. They were all carrying merchant supplies, but. They didn't offer to sell anything, which is strange. Yeah, out of character, get this. He's fucking building it for the cult? What the fuck is going on? Gosh, I was just gonna take this and to account kind of like noted in his head and start wondering what the what he might be up do you by the way is the uh the shaft for your um uh axe poking out of your uh backpack by any chance Uh, Vester, the, um, the, uh, are you the one who was assembling the, uh, the axe? Uh, no. I, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it, uh... Fuck, who was it? It, was, it, was, it, was, uh, it was either uh, you or Gorin, uh, so it must have been Gorin. Gorin, yeah, definitely Gorin. Okay, so he's not here, so I'm going to say that, um, uh, that Maddie is currently, um, uh, organizing your backpack, and she pulls out the, uh, the uh, a the axe shaft, and he, the uh, merchant kind of leaves over and goes, "Well, hey now, let me see that really quick." And he pulls out his uh, broken axe blade, and it fits perfectly on it. It's just missing a, uh, it's got a broken blade edge, and it's missing a pair of uh, lanjets to hold it in place. Huh? Well, that sound this sounds like the easiest sale I've ever made. What do you say? Two hundred fifty gold pieces to complete your little arts and crafts project.
I go to Zara. I do not have that kind of coin. How about you? This is out of character, by the way. Uh, yeah, I don't have that amount of coin. You hear the uh, merchant uh, kind of lean over and say, you know, the church is always looking for work, always on the hunt for whoever Fibroin declares a heretic. You could make some good money doing a little bit of hunting. They're uh, uh, looking for one in particular, paying a pretty penny for it. Not saying anything, you didn't hear anything from me, but something you could keep an eye out for. Up the price on travelers. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. My prices are as fair as anyone else's in this city. And that is an incon incontrovertible fact. Um, absolutely. Roll insight. Oh, Jesus. Um, you're 100% certain that his prices are equally as fair as everybody else's, and you look around and see that everybody's prices are hilariously inflated. You can also see that, uh, uh, beneath the paper that has the prices listed on it, there's like a curl in the paper with another sheet underneath it. Oh, this bastard. <laughs> Hey, look, a man's got to make a living, and he has a right to, to make his prices whatever he wants. Get off my back. Vastro's going to look at him going, That's fair, but we seem to have the shaft for that broken blade, which kind of makes me think that being as we are half owner of the, the weapon that this, uh, to the piece of that blade, Shouldn't the price be more, should, should be lowered? I cannot talk. Uh, if you want to negotiate, you can certainly make a persuasion check. Sixteen. He'll, uh, he uh, leans in and kind of waves your uh, head closer to his. I lean in. Listen, the church is putting a high high tax on everything. They take 80% of everything we make. I'm just trying to make a living here. But you guys look like you know something that the rest of us don't. So for just you, maybe I'll knock a little bit off the price. Say I give you that blade and let you complete that little craft project. What are you going to do for me? Maybe we can work something out. What do you have in mind? Fibroin has just been declaring people as heretics at random, and no one's willing to question him. I'm not saying I want the man dead, because that would start an absolute fucking riot, but maybe just weaken people's confidence in him a little bit, you know what I mean? Vasha hears this and goes, I'll definitely look into it. This should not stand. As far as the taxes are concerned, it all goes into his, uh, his treasury at his house. Money goes in and never really seems to come out. But we do see a lot of sketchy people go in and out of his place. And that includes that sorcerer fellow I met earlier. Vasher will just narrow his eyes going, you, If you had led with that, I would have actually told you it would be done immediately. He goes, a little bit of uh, uncovering of a couple of secrets, and I'll give you that axe blade for free. How's that sound? Deal? Vasher holds out a hand to go. Oh, Zuko's taking the deal as well, so we're both going deal. He uh, crosses his arms and uh, shakes both of your hands and goes, Now get this done before he declares me a heretic too. I don't want to be next. All right, time to do some investigation, Gozar. Right. 
All right, so let's see. Um, hmm. I think what I might want to do is ask around about the guy, like get more information on him from the people, get their opinion as well. All right, there's a couple people immediately available. There is a um a, a tavern called the um. Uh, the prancing silkworm. Uh, there is the uh, fisherman who's just coming in with about 30 fish pierced on a single spear wandering in. And there's a, um, a couple of uh, priests ringing bells outside of the, uh, the church. And then there's also the two guards by the uh, bridge entrance. Divide and conquer, go to Zar. You go to the church, I'll go talk to the fisherman. Uh, let's have a... Uh, yeah, let's have a... Uh... Our NPCs go with us too. So, well, who do you want, Maddie or uh, fuck? What's her name? A seat. Yeah. So you'll definitely need a uh, somebody with muscle. Take the barbarian mafoc. All right. So you've got uh, Sete, the barbarian mafoc, Maddie, the uh, elven squire. Um, and then you've got uh, Tiger's uh, fluffy fat ass. Actually, I think I'm going to need the barbarian. I'm the guy like the squishy one, so take that. Oh, shit, Ivy. Ivy's typing. By the way, how do you spell that one cleric's name? The one that basically is gathering all people at random as hair. Uh, Fibroin? Um... Thank you. Those are the NPC's names. But yes, uh, Fibroin is in the uh, the church. Uh, if Sete is left unattended, she's going to immediately go to the nearest tavern. And if um, Tiger is left unattended, he will immediately start hunting down flowers, preferably clover. All right, I got uh, Sete, and we're going straight to the fisherman. I'm going to drag Sete with me. All right, as you take... Uh, Sete uh, kicking and screaming away from the tavern going it's been it's been a whole day since the last time I've drunk I've been drunk why do you hate me she's she she woke up an hour ago and she's still drunk from last night sober up before you go drinking again but I haven't been drunk since the last time I was drunk have some mercy you can drink later once we're done. She kind of slaps herself in the face a little bit to try and wake herself up. Um, but she does reluctantly come along. And as you walk over to the uh, the fisherman, uh, he, uh, he just, you know, he's walking pretty jovially while everyone else in here seems either bored or relatively stoic. And he's whistling a jaunty tune. And he's got a whole bunch of fish on a very large spear, which he's carrying around with uh, with ease, as if it weighs nothing to him. I approach him and go, oh, Hello there, friend. How goes it? Well, hello there, fellow friend. I uh, don't see any uh, wings on you, so you must not be from around here. No, unfortunately. I'm just passing through on a diplomatic mission for Princess Azure. Huh, is that so? 
Well, you know, the last time we had an elf like you around these parts, some stuff went missing, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm not the nicest to you. I'm actually searching for this elf you to see if it might be the same person we both know. Can you share any information on him? And while we're on the subject about Father Fibro... What about Fibroin? He's a uh, figuratively a pretty big man around these parts. I don't recommend messing with him. I'm just a bit curious about his uh, motives. The way he was handling today's ceremony, his mm, the branding of the heretics seemed more of a execution than a branding. You know what's strange about that? He's been a he's always been a a little bit crazy, never a hundred percent, but he's gotten a hell of a lot more violent ever since that uh, sorcerer came to town. He's like a completely different person. Is that so? It is. Hmm. But don't let anyone uh, hear you say you heard that from me. Your secret's safe from me. So, what do you know about... And uh, Vashar will lean in and go to, and say, the taxi. Taxes went from 10% to 80% overnight. It was insane, and everyone's too scared to complain about it. But you didn't hear that from me, and we're going to put you on pause and flip on over to Gozar. Gozar, you are with uh, Tiger and Maddie. Tiger is at the end of his leech trying to eat every decorative flower on every windowsill in the city. And where did you say you were headed off to? The church. The church. So if you go, as you go to the church, there are two guards with uh, spears, banners on their spirits, just sort of falling asleep at the wheel because they're tired, they're bored, and they look like they've been up for a couple of days straight. Uh, if they don't try and stop me, I will just walk in. They, uh, they kind of, uh, put their hands out and go, Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. There's no service right now. Can I help you? Uh, I will hold up, uh, the holy symbol and I'll say, I wish to talk to the priest here. Oh, shit, there they work for the princess. My apologies. And they, uh, move their spears out of the way. Uh, and do I see, like, any makeup? Or, or are these moth folks or elves? Everyone in this town, except for you two, is a moth folk. And that includes the fishermen. Okay, just thought to make sure. Uh, so since they're moth folks, I immediately don't think anything is wrong with them, and I walk in. Alright, um, as you walk in, this is a beautiful church. Silver and gold inlays marble statues uh and um there is a, a podium at the front made out of uh uh t um of the finest mahogany and redwood um all of the pews are um are um padded with silk padding this is a luxury establishment it's the nicest place in the city it borders on being as nice as the castle that you were in in azure topaz's place I would like you to make a uh, perception check as you um as you start looking around. Well, yeah. You don't notice anything out of place per se, but you do hear a little bit of uh, noise coming from uh, uh, the door beyond the podium because there's like a little stage where he gives sermons, a podium, and behind there is an exit. Uh, do I see, this, other than windows, any other exit to this room? Um, there's, a uh, the stained glass windows are, uh, have latches, which appear to have been welded shut. 
And there are also exit doors um, made out of, um, uh, with us, heavy cast iron, like, doorknobs and locks. And the locks are also welded shut. Uh, do those doors look like they lead outside or to different rooms? They lead immediately outside. Okay, so, uh, plot-wise, the only way I can go is... It appears that, um, uh, the exits have been sealed. Except for one that is kept armed, kept with armed guards at all times. Okay, then... Uh, I will make my way towards the back room. I won't open it, but I would like to see if I can't hear anything strange. All right, uh, make a uh, perception check. Sixteen. I can feel our grasp on the people weakening. Don't worry. They don't suspect a thing. Listen, listen, listen. We cannot do this forever. Let's just get the tribute and get out. This is getting more dangerous by the minute. Someone's going to figure it out. <laughs> Shut up! Does that muffled voice sound uh, like familiar, maybe, the father's voice? Uh, Player-wise, you know what I'm going for. Character-wise, he probably doesn't know, but he might still be able to pick it out, just in case. Um, if you mean that you're trying to decipher whether or not it's Fibroan, you've never met the man yourself, so you wouldn't be able to pick out his voice. And as far as you can tell, it doesn't sound familiar to anyone else you've met so far along your travels. Okay. So, the only information I currently have is uh, two people are in there. One is what I presume to be Father Bri Vib Fibroin and someone else who I do not know with a person tied up, correct? You can hear three distinct voices and then a muffled voice. And they, uh, the three voices are talking to each other in hushed tones. And you can hear them starting to walk towards the exit. And they, uh, you hear some uh, quiet whispering. And they go, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Jesus. Uh, I would like to uh, quietly back up and uh, kind of like head towards the, uh, towards like the front pews, but try and get as far back as I can, but, but still be facing forward. So he, so if they open the door and see me, they don't think I was trying to leave. So they think that I'd be, I would just have walked in. So, uh, the the pews have high backs and like a little cubby beneath them where to give themselves a uh, foot room. So you can either try to hide inside of the uh, the pews, or you can just walk back by the door and pretend you're just walking in. Uh, I'd like to. Act as if I'm just walking in. All right. Uh, you hear them coming in advance, so you're able to um, uh, um, walk, get over there and start walking forward slowly without an issue. I would, however, like you to make either a performance or a deception check to make it uh, to hide the suspicious look on your face. Just. Play it cool, keep a poker face, nothing going on over here. Perfor uh, performance or deception? Well, I know I'm playing the charisma character, but I'm going to tell you now, these are both the same and they both suck <laughs> ass. Nineteen. Nice. So you stroll forward like you've just entered the place. Uh, you can see Fibroin uh, wandering outside, and you see two shadowy figures sort of, you know, disappear uh, to the left and to the right. He closes the door behind him, locks it with a key, um, 
And he uh, looks at you and goes, uh, I don't remember scheduling a meeting. And I also don't remember inviting you into my church. Do you need something? Yes, I would wish to talk to you about some of the other circumstances that happened earlier. I, I think we might have gotten off on the wrong foot, and I would like to make sure that doesn't happen again. Maybe we can make amends. You see him swagger up to the podium like he owns it, slams his hands down uh, like you know, dramatically, and he goes, well, I'm always happy to talk things out. Come forward. Maybe we can, uh, work something out. I'm going to walk up and get right next to him, but I will not go into the back room with him. And as I get up there, I will say, I think talking here would be best. No? He, uh, he's on an elevated platform, so even though you're naturally taller than him, he's, uh, he's actually looking down on you from his podium, which is visibly giving him a sense of smug satisfaction. He goes, oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. no. I, I, I got up on the platform with him. Like, I'm right next to him. Ah, he is uh, substantially less thrilled about that, but he's going to stay at his podium, hands on either side like he's about to give a servant and say, if you've got something to say, I'm listening. Well, I've already shared my views with you about how, regardless of, of if they might be heretics or not, still up to debate, how do you determine who and who isn't a heretic? Um, uh, he goes, well, I hear all of my commands directly from the word of God herself. For yes, 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 that's fine. But how do you determine who's a heretic without any input from Fotismos? I'm not sure I like what you're accusing me of, friend. I'm not accusing you of anything, friend. I am just wondering what if... Fotismos doesn't answer you one day, how would you determine who's a heretic or not? Would you just go off based on a clue off a hint or someone's word, or would you try and find the evidence first? Well, you, you know, anytime somebody acts out of line, I find it rather suspicious, and I don't particularly like it. But I'm a man of evidence, and I don't jump to conclusions, so I always ask God first. Conveniently, she always agrees with me. Again, without the input from Fotismos, how would you determine who is guilty and who is not? Well, conveniently, the people that I found guilty are people who disrespect me, especially in public. I'll be praying for you later. So you are telling me the only way you can determine if someone is a heretic or not is if they rub you the wrong way. So say, I have rubbed you the wrong way. We can both agree with that. Everyone saw it. So if I were to suddenly become a heretic, wouldn't that be rather suspicious? Not at all. Like I said, God speaks through me, and she happens to agree with me, which must mean that's there's a sense of fate to it, don't you think? Like a sense of predetermination. There really is no chance in this world, you know what I mean? He puts his hand on your shoulder and goes, everything is going according to plan. Is he trying to cast something on me? Make an arcana check or cast the spell detect magic. Well, I have the spell detect magic, but it's a ritual spell. And honestly, I don't know any of the shit that's happening with Goda. Alright. Uh, how, uh, how long has it been since uh, he's 
gone in. There. Um, it's only it's it's only been about uh, five minutes because Goza was able to get in and uh, get to this point relatively quickly with an eight Arcana check. You do not know uh, detect any magic whatsoever, and he just appears to be making a firm point by firmly grabbing your shoulder. Um, we're going to put you on pause for a moment and uh, hop back over to uh, Vashtar. You see the uh, fisherman is looking anxious to get back to uh, his uh, stand and sell some uh, some of his fresh-caught fish. Is there anything else you want to say to the man before he goes to his market stall? Uh, no, I'll let him go. I'll say thank you for the information you have provided, sir. And your time. And uh, one more thing. I think I saw your friend headed towards the uh, church. I see a lot of people enter there. I don't see a terribly great many people leaving. Hearing that is going to cause a little suspicion and concern as Bastard nods and starts making his way over to the church. As you uh, walk towards the church and uh, the uh, guards are going to cross spears and be like, Another one? What do you want? Is there a meeting we weren't told about? We're supposed to be told everything around here. I show my badge and goes, I believe a compatriot of mine has gone. Well, I'm not about to offend a servant of the princess when we're trying to make peace with the world. <sighs> I did my job. Go on in. I'm not getting in trouble for this. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. As me and Sete walk in. As you walk in, I'd like you to make a perception check for me. Alright. Did, did, did stuff happen while that was happening that I should know about, Xena? Fourteen. Alright, so you walk in and you can see that, uh, you can see Gozar speaking with Fibroin. Uh, Fibroin's hand is on his uh, shoulder um, and he has to reach all the way up just to reach this bugbear's shoulder. Uh, you look around and you have this vague sensation that you're being watched but you don't actually see anything present or anybody watching you. And uh, aside from Fibroin who immediately notices your uh, presence and goes, well I guess the guards are just letting everybody in today. It would appear so. So, I'm sure, um, I hope my companion hasn't caused too many problems. Of course not. We were just having a friendly chat. And he gives you a, a friendly slap on the chest, goes out and says, Isn't that right, friends? Does, uh, am I under the effects of any spell that would make me charm. You feel completely fine, and you, uh, your uh, head feels clear. In fact, you're clearer than it usually is by a substantial degree, most likely because of that uh, confrontation with Fibroid. I don't feel good about this. Um, I'll say, I'll just look at him and just be like, I feel like we have a bit more to discuss. Vashar will hear this uh, here and goes, well, if you, this is your, this is your, ah, oh, fuck, I cannot talk. I'm trying to find the right word. All right, here we go. Well, this is your show. I just came in to make sure you were all right. You mind if I have a seat, Father Broden? Broden? But of course, they are the most luxurious seats money can buy. Comfort is of utmost importance. Okay, so that's not helping his case at all. Uh, as Vashtar goes to sit down at one of the seats, and I'm going to cast Ritual Cast while I'm sitting there with my hand over my uh, gauntlet with the arcane focus attached to it. <laughs> detect magic because I because I feel like I'm being watched I want to make sure if it's a, of a magical means or not 
As you um, uh, sit down in the seats, you see that this is the most luxurious and soft silk you've ever felt in your life. And like, you almost want to just ease into your seat, stare straight ahead, and relax and listen. Like, it takes a measurable force of will to cast your ritual. Um, by the way, how long does that ritual take to cast? Ten minutes, so depending on how long go as I can keep this guy talking will depend on if this spell takes effect or not. Hey, I have a pretty decent charisma. I can keep this guy talking. I would, um, uh... Now, um, Fibroin is gonna go off on a long-winded speech about how great he is, his connection with God, yada, yada, yada. I'd like you to make a charisma check to, one, keep him going, and two, attempt to keep him on point and continue to ex extract information. All right. So you get him to, uh, to uh, talk for about, uh, about five minutes straight. He doesn't really say anything particularly relevant, and he's kind of derailing, and he looks like he's um, uh, um, trying to find an excuse to uh, leave, and he even motions to um, uh, get around you. Um, at, at, at the five-minute mark, I'll say, so there is one more question I did have for you, one big question. So, I heard that the taxes jumped to 80%. Um, may I know why you did that? Well, God's work is expensive work. Some things that uh, go on behind the scenes require more money than people realize. It takes a lot of manpower to keep those silkworms happy, content, and fed. Those temperatures have to be expertly re uh expertly temperature controlled at exactly 68 degrees or else the silkworms are liable to die and when you've got as many of them packed in there as i have maximizing efficiency you spare no expense to make them produce as much silk as humanly possible yes but other than these silkworms which i'm pretty sure before you increase the taxes uh they were still living comfortably, perfectly, at the tax you were at. So where's this other 70% going? <laughs> you misunderstand. When I arrived, it was just a casual farm with maybe 50 or 60 silkworms on a, on a so, plot of sir, land. That is, sir, that is not what I'm meaning. Where's the other 70% going? To the silkworms. I built that sir, two story sir. tall. Sir, I, I do not trust you. I am sorry, but it is really hard to trust you. Last time, where is the other 70% going? It is going to the silkworms, and that's all I have to say about it. Okay, I need to go through some stuff, see if there's anything I can do. Being a bit too aggressive here, my friend. Right. I'm going to put you on pause. Uh, now, Zalatar, um, you see um, uh, uh, Maddie Sete and the uh, fat, fluffy, six-foot-tall um, tiger are, um, are, are being prevented from entering a uh, church. You, uh, you were sort of in a fog, not really paying attention, and you find yourselves at, in the, at the top of a, of a steep 25 foot plateau there is a lake beside you that feeds into a waterfall and you are surrounded by moth folk your friends are not present you kind of wake up out of your exhausted days and you see a bunch of vendors and peaceful people wandering around you what do you do uh i think you were gonna get some water so i don't know if he heard any of that and uh, yes, Maddie, Tiger, and Sete were not allowed in because they did not have a badge. Maddie did have a badge, but she lost it. God damn it, Maddie. Uh, honestly, sounds like her, though. If Bastar finds out, he's going to scold her. 
All right, while the uh, conversation is deteriorating, Vashtar, you can see that time is running out. You've had like seven minutes. You, I'd like you to make an arcana check to see if you can uh, rush the spell at all and get this thing out before this uh, things deteriorate even worse. All right, here's open. Dirty 20. All right. So the last uh, uh, four or five minutes of the spell are almost exclusively hand gestures. And as long as they're done in the correct order, you could do the entire spell in about 30 seconds. I'd like you to make a sleight of hand check to rush through it and get this done in a handful of seconds. You have advantage on this check because of your high arcana check. Ah! Day and night right there. It is unfortunately going to take you the full 10 minutes to get this done. So it's up to Gozar to drag out this conversation another 3 minutes or so. Gozar, you are still talking to him. You can see your friend rapidly going through hand motions trying to cast some sort of spell. So you know uh, that he's trying to accomplish something relevant. Yes, so, uh, <clears throat> and I had just kept insisting that he was absolutely wrong for, well, I kept asking him the same question of where the other 70% was going. He still hasn't given me a good answer. He is <sighs> insisting that it's all going to the Silk Farm. Which you don't believe, but he doesn't appear to be budging on that particular point. Uh, I will look at him and I'll say, Who owns the Silk Farm? I do, of course. Well, it's a community effort, so we own it as a people, but I run it. So, you are telling me that all 80% technically goes to you, correct? In a sense. So you're, so, of course, you wouldn't do this, but let's say you did increase the tax. Well, you, you don't have to assume that you did increase the tax, if I'm not mistaken. But let's say one day you decide to increase the tax. Let's say that's also the day you decide to want more money. Again, I'm not saying that you have, but let's say that you have. Let's say you did. It would be easy for you to say all this money is <clears throat> going to the silk farm, so our means of living can stay where they can stay in a better condition. Wouldn't it be easier then to for, let's say, a few gold here, a few gold there, maybe a couple platinum pieces there, to just suddenly go missing? I mean, not every single one of my accountants is, you know, mathematically trained. A few of them make mistakes every once in a while, and, you know, being a merciful leader, I forgive them. Uh, I'll just nod my head and say, yes, I, I see. So, he's in, uh, behind my back, I'll have like both my hands like kind of behind my back and I'll and as I say account uh, and I'll and as I say accountants I do the finger quotes and I'll say so your accountants have been maybe losing a few here and there, maybe lining their own pockets or they simply misplace them. Who is your accountants? Well I brought a um uh a team of accountants, if you will. I'll, um, uh, in the, um, I keep all of them, uh, close at hand. They keep track of my coin. Would you like to meet them? Not at this moment. Uh, what I would like to know is, how long have you been here? Uh, 
I I was born here. Yes, but how long ago was that? I am 45 years old. Uh, and as I start realizing that he's uh, kind of getting shaky on his own history, I'm going to be like, so uh, how, how long ago did you say that those uh, people came in and bought all the polymorph potions? Um, he said it was, um, about a month ago, somebody came in and, um, bought all of the polymorph potions. It was a, a suspicious elven sorcerer and his gang of elven friends. Okay, so I will be... So, you weren't at a shop, uh, let's say a month ago, and bought 20 of a specific item? And why would I need 20 potions? And I'll just look at him with a grin on my face and I'll say, I never said what you bought. So, Mr. Dark Elf, where is the real father? At that moment, Vashtar, you're finally finished casting your spell and you can see, uh, um, just this wave of magical outlines appear over everything that is magical in this room. The entire room is glowing, including a humanoid figure now glowing next to you, holding a crossbow to your head. I'll instantly cast mage armor on myself, and I'm going to... Also, cast a bird because this could work. It's an action and a bonus action. Cast a magic weapon on my short sword, giving it some magical benefits now. As I go for a swing at that person right next to me. And pause. Zalatar, are you ready to join the group? I think we might need you, buddy. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Okay, so Tar is going to meet uh, Mr. Maul. Like how? Ghost has a mall. Somebody has a ball? Mall. Zalatar. You saw your friends go into the church. You know your friends are in the church. Do you go to the church? The same church as before or a different church? There's only one church in town. Uh, he wasn't here when it got explained. We're in the Silk Town now. So, so this is a completely new church. Actually, can you guys get him caught up really quick? I'll be right back. Sure thing. So, the... Uh, we start off in this new town where a preacher dude was, uh, it was a branding of a heretic, but instead of branding, he killed the guy. And then the uh, mothiness that we uh, summoned like last session, uh, she was also about to be killed as a heretic. <clears throat> and we managed to, I managed to be the distraction while Vashtar used the powder to get her out of there. And we were we were rolling really good to convince the people that this guy was not who who he was. A fake, basically. And then he said, well, thank you for coming to my demonstration today, people. He rolls a nat 20 on persuasion. So now the so the entire time I was just like, ah, oh, that that was pretty cool. <clears throat> so I decided to go meet him at the church to try and you know talk to him, see if I can't call him out on any of this bullshit. <clears throat> and uh, we just happened to stop by a shop on the way, where we found a broken axe head for uh, Goren's uh, axe. And we also found that we also found out that he was sold out on polymorph potions. 
then we cut to uh, Vashtar. He was talking to a fisherman dude, uh, and he happened to mention that uh, everything went to shit like a month ago when, like, basically overnight, he decided to, the uh, priest decided to increase the taxes to 80%. And uh, that everything is just, like, very bad. And so I immediately connected the dots. Of course, Gozar didn't know any of that because he was at the church. And so eventually Gozar managed to uh, talk talk long enough for Vashtar to get there. And as Gozar was finally putting uh, stuff together... He was like, this man is under the effects of a polymorph potion. And so now he's like, this guy is not who he says he is. I'm allowed to kill him because he is impersonating an actual person. Anything so, you got And is kill everyone inside the fucking cast. The- no, no, it's... Uh, what I can gather is that his plan is to basically get all this town's money, uh, probably kill off the actual priest, and then make it look like a suicide. So then he can basically get off scot free. Yeah. The polymorph potions are probably being used to disguise the Dalbazar, a uh, adversary I built into Vashtar's backstory. It's someone who killed his mother. You guys, your characters don't know this, of course. And he also has a following. He has a group of elves that are at his back. And they have some of the potions as well. So they're probably disguised. And, of course, Gozar was quick at realizing that <laughs> he, the player himself, was quick at realizing, oh, yeah, the, these people are not who they say they are in the church. And he kind of caught a secret talk, conversation. I, I forgot. Who has the brand? Was it you, Zalatar? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay, if you can manage to get me that during combat, I do have a plan with it, okay? Thing is, if he's charismatic enough, he could easily turn this around and be like, oh, they're heretics. They they entered into my church and they attacked me and they took my own bread and branded me a heretic. But he... Uh, if the polymorph potion works anything like the spell, the moment he takes any damage, he gets turned back into his original form. That is very true. I also want to point out that just to... So... I don't know about his followers, but Dalvazar is definitely not a dark elf. He is a high elf, but he is... Character-wise, I built him. He's kind of on the he lives up to the sorcerer's archetype wild magic. He's unhinged most of the time. He's crazy. Yes. And he thirsts for power. So hell, he wants how I originally set him set the rules of magic in Celestis for what I was writing down. Magic requires one's life force to be able to cast. The greater the magic, the more taxing it is on the person. If it's too great, they could die. Now, wild magic is something that's so dangerous and powerful that it could kill the caster. Dalvazar sought to be immortal to prevent this. So you're saying in, a, in your campaign that if I were to cast a cure wound spell, I would actually hurt myself? No, 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 no. I'm going based off D&D rules for magic. I'm just saying that the way I wrote it down through, because I was trying to make it into a story, the rules of magic for Celestis in the world was basically it requires life force of the caster. 
but you're not actually implementing that, correct? No. No, not in the D&D campaign. Hell no. Okay, so it's going to be like, honestly, I love that concept. It's really cool, but I don't, I don't want to lose health if I want to cast a ninth level fireball just to kill someone. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here. Zalatar, you uh, walk up to the church where you know your friends are, present your badge when requested so the guards let you in. You see your friends are um, uh, freaking out. Uh, they all look uh, pretty, uh, they're all starting to sweat a little bit. Gozar is talking to a uh, priestly looking moth folk. Um, Vashtar is reaching for his sword, uh, looking like he is about to swing into absolute nothingness. Make a perception check. Guys, I also want to point out that I am low on spell slots. I get one for first level, one for second level. I've already used my uh, arcade recovery. We we did take a long rest, so wait, fuck. wait, why why do you have a uh, first level spell slot gone? What do you mean? Made armor. Never mind. I remember now. Yeah. Uh... Okay. So, Vashtar, I'm going to have you roll to attack, and then we're all going to roll for initiative. Shit is uh, a nanosecond from hitting the fan. Zalatar, you are 60 feet away from your friends. Uh, Sete, Maddie, and Tiger are 30 feet behind you, arguing th with the guards to let them in. My fucking god. <laughs> oh my god. God, what is with my roll? My attack roll? Alright, everybody roll for initiative. I know I said it when I was playing Magnus, but I hate having a low dexterity just because of initiative rules. Oh god, someone's going before me. Joy. Uh, can we get Maddie and Sete uh, in this if they see us uh, engaging? Um, <clears throat> before I would have went inside, I would have told Maddie to stay with the Tiger. Well, yeah, I had Maddie with me. I would have told her to stay with Tiger just in case so nothing happens to him. Alright, so let's get Sede into this because we need someone to hit hard. Um, the NPCs are going to miss around miss a one round of combat because they weren't part of the uh inside the church, so they're gonna have to blow past those guards to get to you. Got you. Okay. So the uh the baddies go first. And the um do 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 so the first one to attack is the one holding the crossbow to Vashtar Nalo's head. And he's within five feet of me. He'll get disadvantage if you're just shooting that. I'd like to see him back up. Come on. I, I have a reaction for attack opportunity waiting for that. That was a potential nat 20 that got lower to a 9. He uh, tries to shoot you at point-blank range, but misses. Um, you draw your sword to try and strike. He tries to shoot at the same time. You both miss at such close range, your sword knocking into his crossbow, nearly taking it out of his hands. Uh, Gozar, you see the uh, Fibroin uh, uh, summon a heretic's brand and uh, uh, shout, HERETIC! and thrust the burning brand at you. He can try.
Not 20. Jesus! <laughs> well then. That is two dead 20s in a row for you, Mr. D. What the fuck? This is why I roll publicly, so y'all don't think I'm fudging my rolls when I nat 20 your asses. You take uh, seven bludgeoning damage as he rams the brand into your chest. The brand burns and scorches your chest for six fire damage. Uh, Zalatar, you were attacked from above. None of you passed the check, so none of you looked up. Uh, you take a crossbow bolt from above. This is why we can't have nice things. You don't hit me, big boy. Uh, you see a crossbow boat uh, land right next to your shoe, uh, scraping some of the leather off of it. You look up, and you see there is a uh, a moth folk hanging from the ceiling like a bat holding a uh, crossbow. All right, next in initiative order, Vashtar. Oh, sh there's just all sorts of things happening today, huh? isn't there? Okay, let's see what can I do. Uh, obviously, all ranged attacks are going to suck at this close. Cool. Uh, the, the range I am with this guy, so instead of moving back, I'm going to swing again with my short... Did we level up, by the way? We're all Did level you... 3, and you will level up again after your next Moth Folk encounter. Okay, just checking. Moth Eater. Yes, my apologies. Because if it was Moth Folk, then we'd be leveling up, like, each session. I'm gonna try something. Uh, let's see if this works. I swear to God, if we get another nap one. Jesus fucking Christ of all might. Well, I mean, it wasn't a nap one, so. Is that a seven to hit? Yeah. So, uh, as you uh, you swing your short sword again, uh, he rams his crossbow, the broadside, into your wrists, blocking the attack. Your sword uh, cuts one of the hairs on his head. Hey, I did a hair. Um, it was just the hair. As you shave one of the hairs, the invisibility spell is uh, dispelled, and you see a elf with white face paint and uh, black eyes beneath the uh, the paint. Is this who I think it is? Yeah, you do not recognize this face. It appears to be a generic uh, drow. Okay. If it oh, was... yeah. I didn't hear drow. And I have no bonus actions now. Fuck. Uh, that'll be the end of my turn. All right. Next in initiative order, Zalatar. Someone just tried to shoot you from above. You look up. 20 feet above you in this two-story high church, there is a moth folk shooting at you actively from above. You fool, you said 20 feet, right? Yep, he's 20 feet above you. <laughs> I'm gonna make... Uh, Goten Tag. And since it has a range of 20 feet, I'm just gonna poke at him and say, Hello, how are you? Alright, so you're gonna throw your Goten Tag like a spear? No. It regular range is 20 feet. For thrown, because it's a spear. No, it's it range is 20, it says. For thrown, because it's a spear. I made it, I would know. <laughs> Don't argue. If so you make that, that range attack. If you look at a spear in the canon rules, you will show range 20 thrown. The spear is not 20 feet long. It does not have a telescoping pole in it. 
And plus, you're not the bugbear. You're a hobgoblin. You don't have a reach of 10 feet. So, make that ranged attack roll, please. God, God damn, what's with these rolls? Zalatar, you chuck your spear at the ceiling and you pin it in the wood, missing your target completely. Next in it, uh, do you have any bonus action, Zalatar? No, because they would hurt everyone else. Alright, Gozar, it is your turn. So, this asshole just hit me with a brand, correct? Yes, directly in the chest with a fencing-style thrust to the chest. Well, I certainly don't like that. So I will say, seeing as you are not a true member of this church, I don't believe you will need your life anymore. And I will pull out uh, my maul. And as a bonus action, I will cast in Snaring Strike. And I will attack. Okay, okay. You know what? We're, we, our dice is rigged. Avery. I swear to God, I don't know how to rig Avery. <laughs> Have you been talking to Meta? <laughs> no, actually. Is it possible to rig Avray? Because that sounds like a shit thing yes. to do. It is very possible for what he is saying. Alright, so that's a swing and a miss, my friend. Got any bonus <clears throat> actions? I already used it. On a spell that I can't work until I hit someone. Okay, so, um, you hear Seti screaming from outside, going, You don't get paid enough for this! And the guard just kind of throws his spear on the ground, and he's like, You're right! I don't! Fuck this job! I'm going home! Yay, Seti! Me when I was working at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, I, walked, I actually walked out of that place one day, and I was like, I don't get paid enough to put up with bullshit. Letting everybody else in may as well let in these assholes too. Fuck it, I quit. And you see uh, Sete and Madeline, they uh, run in 30 feet and uh, get to the entrance. They see everybody's fighting everybody. And um, let's see, Madeline, I believe, does have ranged attacks. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, uh, I will yell at both of them to... Protect Tiger. Alright, um, you see uh, Madeline uh, look at uh, all of these uh, mysterious figures, and you're just going to see her throw a cloak overhead, look down, and start whispering menacingly. And you hear these dissonant whispers uh, take physical form and shoot upwards 20 feet towards the uh, moth folk on the ceiling. And he has to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you! Xeno? Wait, no, never Zeno. mind, fuck. That's the wisdom save for the dissonant whispers, <laughs> which does... 3d6 normally, but uh, that was a crit fail. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, I, I go back to what I previously said. Thank you. I forgot. I, forgot. I thought it was a. You see the moth folk uh, 
let go of the ceiling with its feet, fall, turn back into an elf, and collapse dead on the ground. Um, you know, hear me out there, friend, right? Uh, would he try and grab onto the goat and dag to try and stay up there before he died? Um... I like where your head's at. Yes, let's say in the fall he knocks loose the goat and dag. Um, and just for shits and giggles, with advantage, Zalatar make a deck save to avoid getting impaled. I'm gonna laugh if it's too nat ones. I'm giving you advantage because I don't actually want you to be stabbed, but if if you suck really hard, it's gonna be hilarious. I mean, this a bit. Oh, thank God. No, wait, oh, wait, that's not advantage. advantage. Yeah, 17, so with advantage, uh, uh, 10... No, no, that was a 7 and a 10. What's your dexterity modifier, Zalatar? Or is it just a 0? Modifier 0. Oh, oh God. God. Oh. A 10. I'd like you to, to uh... <laughs> I think a spear does 1d10, right? With no modifiers? If no, it's, uh... it deals 1d6. Unless you brewed it differently. Uh, no, it's a spear with special abilities tacked on. Okay, you take three piercing damage as the Godin Dag impales you in the shoulder. <laughs> and for the Godin Dag's uh, bonus action, it casts uh, Dissonant Whispers. It doesn't have a bonus action. What are you talking about? It was a fucking joke. Okay. So uh, that was uh, Madeline's turn. It is now Sete's turn. And aside from a gust attack uh, that she's... A actually, a spear does 1d8. Oh, fuck. That's an no! 8. You take the... The golden dag falls and pierces you in the... In the... Right in the collarbone between the... Uh, between the neck and the trapezius muscle, and that tickles your heart. How much HP do you have? You're still good, right? You're you're level three. You're fine. I have sixteen health left. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. You got this. Did you just add a plus five because it's basically you already took three damage, or did you add the eight with the three damage? No, it's eight damage total because I rerolled. I did the 8 damage. Wait, uh, I'm trying to ask Saltar. I didn't add it. So okay. I added 5. Okay. That's all I needed to know because yeah. that would have been worse. Alright, Sete only has a mall, so she's too far away to do anything useful at this particular point. Um, so, why did I not give her a long rest? Um, so, she is going to um, dash action. She is now 30 feet away. From, uh, do to do to do. What the hell is your name? Uh, Vashtar. She's thirty feet away from you, Vashtar. Awesome. And that is going to end her turn. And um, I'm just going to have them go at the end of initiative rather than having them roll. And then top of the initiative uh, order. Are the baddies? Baddies, which are there are only two left of. So. Uh, you can uh, see rumbling in the uh, the background. There is a um, a, a suspicious uh, uh, tall humanoid figure with a black robe thrown over, rushing, sprinting, crashing through the stained glass windows and sprinting off into the distance. And he says, um, "Don't let them escape." And that voice sounds very familiar, Bashtar. Oh, his his fucking uh, eyes are gonna go wide, and it will look like all his what would be his normal red pupil eyes. It looks like it's now his whole eyes are gonna turn red after hearing that voice. All right, you're gonna see the uh, the baddie with the crossbow is gonna flip a lever on his crossbow, which is gonna flip out a dagger. And he's going to go in for a bayonet uh, with his little modified dagger on his crossbow. 
That's cool. Twenty. Uh, no, not today. Oh, no, wait, it would first. Never mind. They, they both have to be reactions. Otherwise, you take three piercing damage as he scrapes your uh, your cheek down to the bone with his uh, with his bayonet strike. Uh, Gozar, the um, uh, you see Fibroin almost look like he's melting um, as he slowly starts taking the the form uh, more elf like form, but he's not done. He is going to um, shout. Heretic again with the brand, and it is gonna go from red hot to white hot. Oh, Bitch can right. try. Oh god. Yeah. Did he do a uh, DC twelve to attune to the web? This isn't yours. Fourteen. Miss. Miss. You can feel the heat radiating off of this weapon as he swings it like a club and like a spark just flies off and burns the tip of your nose as you duck underneath the swing. All right, that is going to end the baddie's turn as one of them has opted to run away and the other one has opted to die. So, Vashtar, it is your turn. Okay, so... Having recognized that voice and being irritated with the person in front of me, I'm going to cast Burning Hands second level on this fucker. Also, <laughs> apparently, out of the stained glass windows, how far away is he? Um, he smashed through the stained glass window, which is um, uh, 90 feet away from where you're standing, because um, the Vashtar is 60 feet in front of you, and then the podium is another 30 feet. He went right b behind the uh, Fibroin and crashed out the nearest window. Okay. All right. So you said burning hands. I believe that is a deck save, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. And that is the damage I have. Motherfucker, he just passes. He takes seven points of damage. Uh, oh shit, I forgot to keep track. Have you dealt damage to him previously? Because he only has 8 nope. I've been missing. Her. Okay. You see this man get scorched to near oblivion, barely alive. He just goes <laughs> as a plume of smoke, come, smoke comes out of his mouth. Uh, before I return, Vash is going to look you this man dead dead in his eyes with fury and basically say, I don't think you want this. Either get out of my way, or get put down. Uh, make an intimidation check. Oh, my luck's gonna be a shitty roll. Yep. Call it. Nope. He's, a. Uh... Uh, surprisingly confident to a man who was just roasted like a salted peanut. Uh, unless you have a bonus action, that's going to make it Zalatar's turn. Oh. It's his turn, because uh, I do not have a bonus action. So, I'm going to move up 30 feet. Uh, the guy that went out the window, uh, Moonbeam has a range of 120 feet. Oh, shit. Can I uh, use that on him? Um, there are stained glass windows, so you don't have a visual on him. The uh, stained glass obscures your view of the outside. It's just letting colored light in dramatically. Well, he would have just have to... <laughs> it's a range of 100 feet, and he has to make a con save. There's, there's no, like... <laughs> you can try to... Uh, okay. So I think what he's getting at, Zeno, is... Uh, he's going to guess where he is and cast it. He's going to what? It, it, is that correct, Zaltar? He's going to guess where it is and cast it. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, but he, it doesn't say, like, uh, it doesn't have a hit thing. It, it makes sense. It's either an attack. 
Or is he gonna uh, to say like you could so you, have... you could like throw a rock to smash the window so you can see him, but you have to see him first. Otherwise, the beam could be going into any direction. Can I use a bonus? Can I use that bonus action? Can I use bonus action to uh, throw a window? A uh, rock through the window? Uh, there, there, you, there are two options at your immediate disposal uh, to uh, break the window. There is, uh, you can rip off the uh, the wooden armrest, or you can pick up one of the Bibles of Fotismos and chuck that. Bible. No! <laughs> um, excuse me, what? Make either an acrobatics check or an athletics check, uh, 10 or higher to smash the glass. It's only a window, so DC 10. That is the lowest check I think I've ever called for. Go to the nine, nine hills, too. All right, you pick up a Bible of your Lord, chuck it like a frisbee. Foo, 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 foo. Oh, Smash! Forgive me. You see a stained glass visage of your Lord shatter into a hundred pieces, falling like you've just destroyed a boss monster, giving you a perfect uh, view of the fleeing um, uh, man in black robes. I will ask you, is he a shapeshifter? He's currently in black robe, so you cannot tell. Well, if he is, it's his saving throw has disadvantage, so... If he's a shape changer. He'll let you know when he has to make, make the roll. roll. Oh, okay, so... Alright, then. Uh, you have to make a con saving throw. The, um... The party knows this. You, your character does not, but I'll tell you so that you're aware. He is not a shape-changing race. He uses polymorph potions to change his form. It, uh, I, uh, as, as someone, someone who's played someone with that spell, you, it has to be, they have to be a shape-changer, not just something that has a potion or a spell to shape-change. It has to be an innate shape changing power. Okay, and what is the uh, save? Con. Please work, please work, please work. Oh my, my god! I'm gonna take half damage on that fucking ability of yours. Zeto, Zeto, my man, my, my, my DM, what the hell's happening? Uh, are you sure you didn't rig the bot? <laughs> I don't know how. Avery hates us today. I'm now afraid for a little later session with a uh, fucking. Alright. I'm, I'm following this guy. I can move. I, I I can move fucking at 60 feet per action. Okay. <laughs> it's I can guarantee you it's not my luck because I just pulled out one of my dice and I rolled a 15. It has to be the bot. Uh, I have I can have some dice that I could try rolling too. But, uh, the guy I'm, playing I'm, takes five damage. This be... Okay. So, as uh, this uh, sprinting cloaked figure gets hit by the moonbeam, uh, it knocks off his hood. He stumbles forward, his hood knocked off his head. He turns around, and he makes eye contact with you, Vashtar, and you recognize this motherfucker. You already know who it is. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can run and hide, yeah, but I'll still get you. Who it is. Um, uh, you can see him, uh, steal his gaze at you and shout, You'll never get to the brood, mother! And, uh, continue sprinting off towards the, uh, silk, uh, worm farm. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. I called that shit when Zeno said we have yet to see a fucking female drow, and I came up with the theory that they're probably using them as brood mothers. I fucking knew it. 
fuck's a brood monitor? You haven't pl- you haven't played Dragon Age, have you? Broodmother is basically the queen bee that gives all birth to all the worker bees. Yep. All right. So uh, that's so gonna. She's just, she's just sex magnet. Yeah. All she does is fucking give birth and eat, and give orders. Lovely. At least that's the general stereotype of a broodmother. I believe that's the end of your turn, Zalatar, which gonna make which is gonna make it Gozar's turn. What you got for me? Well, let's see. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lambs, yams, pork, you name it. Oh, man. Give me some of them yams. Give me some fried yams with a, with a I got side beans, fries. Greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lambs, yams, pork, you name it. Anyway, you've got a, a false prophet in your midst who uh, turns into a uh, an elf with face paint right before your eyes. Um... Well, in the words of my in the words of my uh, predecessor, whack. <laughs> Fuck. Is that an eleven? Hold on a minute. That is a fucking eleven. Hold on a minute. I think he's only wearing. Yeah, he's a commoner in leather armor. That that hits. I, d- I just think the bot has something wrong with it. So it takes 10 points of damage from the mall itself. Hold on. Uh, it'll take... Uh, he needs to make a strength saving throw because of ensnaring strike. Nueve. This man has no dexterity, so an 11 hits his armor class. Next time before you hit a creature, blah, 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 throw any vines, blah, 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 strength save, nope. Uh, 1d6 piercing damage, nice. How do you want to end this for? So, uh... I'm as... sorry to break it to you, but it's not over yet. Okay. Can, can you not interrupt me, please? I mean, we've had several talks about this, my guy. Anyways, so uh, I go to hit him. He he's on death's door, and I'm just like, never try to impersonate someone whose faith is the most popular faith here. And then the vines just like creep up and get him at once. Like organic saws, the thorny vines course over his body, rending his flesh. You see his rib cage exposed, only to be crushed by the might of the vines. Do you end your turn? Um, let's see if I don't have any other different bonus actions first. That's all I got. Okay, so that's going to make it the uh, NPC's turn. The uh, Maddie is going to try and uh, finish off this 1 HP loser. Seriously? I knocked that bastard down to 1 HP. She's going to take out her dagger and just hurl that, that fucker. She needs to deal one damage to kill him. All she has to do is hit. I'm honestly going to laugh if they miss. That's a hit. He's only wearing leather armor. Oh, thank God. All right. You watch as the... uh, She throws the dagger no-spin knife style, so it goes straight without spinning, and the knife goes through his throat, piercing the carotid and jugular, and just... Just there's an explosion of red that covers you head to toe, Bastar, in this comedic horror movie style gore show. And I think that's the end of combat. 
All right, so the only person, um, then Sete is still aware that um, this cloaked son of a bitch is still on his way. She is going to take her action to be a dash action, and despite there being a shattered window, is going to instead crash through the intact window just to be a dickhead and, uh, and chase after him. So three windows are broken in this damn turn. All, all three <laughs> windows have been shattered. As she does this, I'm just going to yell out, God damn it, Sete! All right, so uh, Sete is 30 feet from the building. You've got um, uh, uh, Dalvazar 60 feet away from her, and he is um, 60 feet away from the uh, Silkworm Farm. So can I move up and then move Moonbeam 60 feet and get um, yes, on your turn, you can do that. But we're still in initiative because there's still a man on the loose. Wait, what? I thought there was only that one guy with one health. Nope, Delves are counted for initiative. So we still are going by Yep, he's at the very bottom of initiative. So top of the initiative order, um, or excuse me, bottom of initiative order, after the NPCs is him, and he is going to sprint uh, another 60 feet his hands are on the silkworm farm, and he's going to start to uh, crawl in. His hands are on the thing, but he is not inside yet. Vashtar, it is your turn. All right. Well, there's not much I can do. He's too far away. I mean, if he hadn't moved, I would have moved 30 feet and would cast Magic Missile, which would definitely have reached. So actually, wait. How far is he exactly from my... Uh, let's see. 60, 60 plus 30 feet away from the building. That's 150 feet. That's a, quite the range. Do you have a bow? If I move 30 feet, I magic missile will just be within range. Nice. Absolutely. So I'm going to move 30 feet and basically cast my gaze upon him and then hold out the hand with the gauntlet and the arcane gem focus on it and cast magic missile with my last first level spell so roll damage that is a total of nine so wham 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 dart after dart after dart punches him in the back um he, uh, a small trickle of blood comes from his back, staining his black robes, but um, he is still actively crawling into the, the silkworm farm. It is now uh, Zalatar's turn. Now, what I'm going to do is going to move 30 feet, and then I'm going to use my action to move uh, Moonbeam 60 feet so I can get him back into the, uh, the Circle of Doom. He's right at the edge of the uh, silk farm, so you can hit him without hitting the worms. Please um, do a con save again, sir. Seventeen. All oh, right, roll it. So apparently it's eleven damage, not nine. I guess from what uh, Godazar is saying, because each bolt gets a plus one. Yeah, each bolt gets a plus one. Not a sink. Not all three. Well, each each bolt before? gets one d four plus one. Yeah, not three d four plus. One. Yeah, I probably should have just made that a plus three, honestly. But yeah. That would be a seventeen, my dude. Your discretion to uh. All right, you hit him in the in the on the head with another moonbeam. You see his cloak is getting a, all kinds of fucked up, scorched nice, um, but he's still got plenty of HP. He is miserable. He is in pain, but he's still good to go. Gozar, it is your turn. He's 150 feet away. Yes. Uh, 
All right, perfect. Uh, I will move up 30 feet. It's good. Grab my javelin. As a bonus action, I shall cast ensnaring. Uh, I will not cast ensnaring strike. And I will yeet my javelin at him. Does a 13 hit? Uh, it does not. He is wearing a chain shirt, so his armor class is higher than those other goons. God fucking... Damn it. He's still 120 feet away, correct? If you moved up 30 feet, then yes. You've closed, uh, you're up to 120 feet away. You're right next to Sete. Alright, so, uh, next in initiative order, uh, you see Sete, and she's just gonna fucking sprint. She's got no ranged attacks whatsoever. A reoccurring problem, actually. And she's just gonna... Ah! She's gonna uh, close the distance by half. She's still too far away to do anything, but she doesn't seem discouraged. She's going for a shoulder tackle as soon as she gets up to that dude. And Madeline, let me see what she can do. Dagger doesn't have range. Does she have any spells that can reach? She does not, so she is going to run. So she was um, to, to do, She was near the entrance, so she's going to run outside, sprint. She is now 120 feet away, too far away to use any of her ranged abilities. All right, that is going to end their turn. And on um, uh, Dalvazar's turn, he is going to climb inside of the hive. You see there's this commotion of uh, buzzing and squirming and wet slopping as worms crawl over each other and out of his way. Damn it, he fucking got away, didn't he? I don't want to shoot an arrow at his ass. You can, uh, you can still chase him inside the hive, or you can assume he's got away and leave him go. It's up to you guys. Oh, is he underground now? He is inside of a hive. The hive is... There are wooden stacks on, like, um, uh, what do you call those, um, what do you call those slats of wood on steel poles? Scaffolding, I think, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So there's, like, like a giant beehive? Yeah, it's, like, scaffolding making stacks on stacks of stacks of wooden floors, uh, like a box holding worms, and this stack is like 20 feet high. It's a two-story high stack. He is at the bottom stack. He vaulted over the five-foot wall, and he's uh, in there with the worms running towards the center. You can hear him squirming. Okay, so... Hmm. And it's my turn again, right? Top of the initiative order. Yes, it is. Well, Vashtar is going to move 30 feet again. Can I still see him once he's in the hive, or is he, like, obscure? Uh, how close are you to the hive? Not close enough, but I'm going to pull out the longbow I picked up earlier, which has a range of 600 feet. Well, assuming you moved up 30 feet, you'd still be in range regularly. Because so, the longbow thing is 150. Without getting right up to the edge of the wall, which he has ducked behind, you won't have line of sight. And if you fire, you're going to be firing into these uh, silkworms that these people farm for their livelihood. Yeah, shit. Uh, that's what I was afraid of. Damn it. And I don't want to... I have no spell slots. I have no means of recovering any either. Fuck it, Vastar's gonna move his full dash movement, which is a total of... Oh, shit, I've been moving 30 feet. I could have been moving 35. So I'm moving 70 feet to this fucker. So I think you're 50 feet away right now, if my math is correct. 
Because how far away were you before? I was 120 feet, and then the guy moved in further, so now I'm doing like a mad dash four. Okay, so you are currently 50 feet away. On your next dash action, you'll be able to get there. Awesome. So, uh, that's going to make it Zalatar's turn. Helm Deep, what you got? So you went to, if I, by the time I'm moving my 30 feet, I'd probably be out of the church by now. Yeah, if you move uh, 30 feet, you're out of the church. All of the windows have been shattered, so you just have to vault the, vault the wall. Okay, so I have no line of sight on this guy at all. No line of sight? No, he ducked below a five foot wall. So well, he is behind full cover. So I, I can't move Moonbeam again and just. Is this, this from, from the, the sky? sky? So there's a. Uh, <laughs> the sky, so. <laughs> there's a five foot wall, five feet of empty space, scaffolding, five foot wall with a, a row of silkworms on top. So there is a lid of more worms on top of this. A uh, farm of worms. Uh, I hate worms. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep moving my moonbeam as I go, but not into the worms. I'm going to go around it, around the worms. If that makes any sense. So how far away are you from the stack? Well, I made three 30-foot moves so far, so I'm 90 feet from where I was usually where I was. I'm outside, so. So I think you're 60 feet away now. And my moonbeam has a range of 120 feet, but I keep moving at 60 feet each time I move. So. So at the moment, your moonbeam is at the ready, directly above this stack where he is hiding. Unless you can move it under, or is it like coming from the sky? It's from coming literally from the, the moon or the sky. Okay, so it's coming from the sky. You're not going to be able to hit him without hitting the worms on top. I'll put Moonbeam uh, in any other en uh, exit uh, on the, in the back. I guess. Oh, gotcha. So you're going to have it waiting for him in case he comes out. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And that's going to make it Gozar's turn. What are you going to do? I'm just going to dash up and uh, try and get to him. All right. How far away are you right now? I was 120 feet at the end of my last turn. Okay, so if you dash 60 feet, you're now 60 feet away. Does that end your turn? That is it. All right. So Sete is going to sprint to the edge Closing the gap, she puts her hands on the five-foot wall, looks over, and she goes, Guys, there's a trap door in here! And uh, she's out of actions, and you just hear the creaking and the slamming as Dalvazar spends his action to get underneath the trap door. Maddie is um, 30 feet away, sprinting as fast as her tiny elven legs will carry her. Or skinny elven legs, excuse me. Top of the initiative, Vashtar, what you got? Yeah. Damn it, Talvasar. Fuck. All right, so Vasha is gonna move over to where Sete is, and with his full seventy feet. And I think I need an action. Yeah, I'm not like a rogue, so I need an action to be able to mess with things. So I'm gonna be right there at the trap door. All right. So you sprint to the edge, vault over the wall, the silkworms squirm out of your way and give you a path. You're at the trap door, which is, um, there is no lock on it. So you can spend an action to, or bonus action to open that bad boy up. I don't believe you spent your bonus action, so I think you can still do that. Yeah, I'm going to use my bonus action to open it. Um, you can see Dalvazar is a uh, landed 20 feet below the surface, and he's got a, a shelf of potions by his side. Um, 
and a whole bunch of pointy things coming out of the walls, like stalactites, stalagmites, whatever the hell uh, horizontal spikes are. He's got some sort of uh, room filled with pointy shit that he is currently cowering inside of. God damn it, Delvazar! Get out here and face your death like a man! Don't worry, I've got a gift for you, but now is not the time. You will not catch me. Oh, I fucking hate this guy. And <laughs> All right, so that's going to make it Zalatar's turn. Um. I I think I'm up where Nick is now. All okay. right. And you and is am I uh, is he visible to me? If you're using your action to dash up to where um uh, Vashtar is, you can see him, but you only have a bonus action, but you can see him. So I can't, like, per se, like, put my top half through the hole so no one effect is affected by said 100-foot range thing. <laughs> like I said, there's a lid of worms above you, so you can't strike him without destroying the worms. God damn it! <laughs> Actually, uh, my bonus action, I can... I can uh, wild shape, but we never discussed what I can wild shape into. Oh, uh, no restrictions. If it's allowed by the class, it's I'm allowing it here. We discussed that earlier because I thought uh, some of the stuff you could turn into was really cool, and I thought the restriction that you had to see it first was dumb and required me to do a bunch of work as to what your character has and hasn't seen. So what do you wild shape into as a bonus action? Give me a second now, because... <laughs> so any beast within the CR that does not have an innate swimming or flying speed. No climbing, you said? God damn it. No flying, no swimming, I believe is the restriction that's specified. I'm going to turn into a crack cat. Meow, indeed. All right, does that end your turn, my dude? It does. And next turn, I'm going to get up. All right, Gozar, are, are you able to dash up to the rest of the party at this point? Oh, I have my action, so I can dash. Yeah. All right, so you dash with your action. You are next to your friends. You have your bonus action. What do you do? Well, I, I, I don't really have any good things for my bonus action. Okie doke. So that's going to make it the NPC's turn. Maddie is going to uh, hop the fence, get up to you. However, Sete... Is uh, was able to get to the end, so she vaults over, moves 30 feet, and she's still got her bonus action and action. She takes out her maul and goes, I've been waiting to smash some shit all day! And she just falls. Doesn't even jump. She just sort of leans forward with the maul out and tries to land on the son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's her alignment? Um, chaotic neutral. 
It's okay, I'm stupid. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. All right. So she uh, she goes in for a overhead uh, swing as she falls 20 feet down at her opponent, misses the strike, and lands on her face. Damn it. And she takes seven fall damage because she landed on her fucking face. God damn it, Sally. All right. It is now my dude's turn. He is uh, in his lair. He is next to his potions and poultices. And what's this? Scrolls. You see him pull out a scroll off of his shelf. And uh, Vashtar, you know what this is. This is a scroll of Dimension Door. No! You did not get to him in time. And he is gone. Really quickly, it's still good. 120 minutes earlier. Vashtar, as 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 for like role playing purposes, uh, for and dramatic reasons, is going to cast Fireball, and it's just going to hit the back of the wall as Dalvarzar disappears, and he's going to curse up a storm in Elvish. Are you blasting a blank wall, or are you blasting the shelves with all the cool shit on? Uh, was the shelves behind him? Because it's wherever I was be able to. He was standing in front of the shelf, grabbed a scroll off of the shelf, and noped out of there. <laughs> yeah, so the shelves get hit. You watch as a shelf full of uh, flammable scrolls and uh, mysterious potions smash and burn. <laughs> As you bolt it. So, <laughs> as you see the potion smashed to the ground, the labeled bottles with their ingredients spilled all over the floor roll towards you. A uh, potion of storm giant uh, strength shattered. A uh, potion of superior healing shattered. Uh, scroll of Dimension Door on fire, and you watch it all shatter and burn. No fucking regrets. I'm sorry, this is what Vashtar would do. He hates Dalvis. As you uh, annihilate his treasure trove, the only thing left in the room is a, uh, is a small lockbox in the corner. Uh, uh, held up in the air by some stalagmites on the ground. So, in other words, it's booby trapped. It's, funny. it's, a, uh, it's about a, a one foot uh, long, six inch thick, six inch high box with a small lock on it, resting on top of some naturally occurring spikes. Okay, I'm going to turn back into my actually... No, can I, in the beast form, can I do arcana checks on stuff? Is that, is that a thing? I don't know. When you're transformed, your mental stats stay the same, but your physical stats change. But I believe you can still cast spells. As long as they don't require a, um, a verbal or somatic component that you cannot do as that creature. I mean, I was going to do an arcana check on the boss. So, yeah, I'll say a cat can uh, sniff out some uh, some sweet, sweet arcana. Go ahead and roll. Vashtar is going to look around the room, other than where that box is at, to see if there's anything that could hint to him where Dalvazar may have gone. All right, make is an that... investigation check. Wait. Oh, fuck. I don't even know I what mean, sorcery nine. spell What's you What's with get? my rolls? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know what sorcery, you know, like, points you gave him. So, for all I know, he could be, like, fucking 600 feet away with that dimension door, or... Well, you know, well no, it was a spell, remember? So... 
It was a scroll, so it's the uh, default length of the spell. Okay. Because that was where you, if it was, yeah, with the sorcery, sorcerers having the ability to double the effective range of spells. All right. So, um, does anyone, uh, investigation, 15. 15. So with a 15, uh, you're able to navigate this spiky, spiky landscape. And you find that one of the spikes is a lever. And as you pull the lever, it moves aside a portion of the wall, revealing a shrine um, to a drow brood mother. And there are sculptures of her with her hands in the air, standing on a podium supported on the backs of drow men. Well, then, she's a thought. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of uh, prayer materials and lit candles uh, and a, a very ornate solid onyx sculpture. Onyx what? The there's a 5 or 6 foot tall sculpture made out of onyx stone. What is onyx? It's a shiny black rock that some people think is valuable, some think is just a rock. I'm going to take it. Uh before you do that, you piece of shit, you are not going to ruin this for me. You always take shit, so come on. And I was waiting for everyone to be done before I could say You ruin something. shit for everyone else, my guy. I was going <laughs> to sell it in the black market, you fool. <laughs> I need money to pay for the windows. So do I, but the role-playing purposes, damn it. Vashto's going to look at the whole shrine bit and basically say, Maddie, take a note on this. The princess should know. And he's going to wait for her to take that note, and as... Zalatar goes to take it. He's going to walk up to the fucking shrine and just knock shit over out of frustration. All right. Uh, you start smashing religious uh, uh, relics all up in this place, destroying false idols. Now you can pick up the remains. Fuck you. Seriously, you play a act like a rogue every fucking time with all your characters. Hey, I am a guy for money and stuff, dude. I You're like a money. druid. That shit should not be your focus. To donate to the church, you mean. Uh -huh. Literally all your characters are rogues. <laughs> I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Really. You're not wrong. Fine, if you guys aren't going to open the chest, I will. Uh, You're like Muhammad you wanna... in Mecca smashing the false idols. <laughs> Anyone else going to open the chest? <clears throat> oh. Okay, Zalatar, make an investigation check to find anything valuable amongst the rubble. And Zalvatar, of course, we're going to open it because Vashtar's going to want to know if there's any information in there that really stops our thing is it's surrounded by spikes. So unless we've deactivated the traps. With a 19, you pick up the hand of the, um, of the drow brood mother, which has a genuine ruby ring with a gold band on it that you can snag. Happy birthday. Roll a d100 to see how valuable it is. Rolls a one, it's fake. <laughs> Could be. Roll it. Alright. It's not the, the best craftsmanship, but it is a real ruby, even if it's not the greatest ruby. So you can, you can get some gold for that. You estimate 41 gold pieces for the ruby ring. And everything in this ring, whatever this ring gets, it's going to go to the church. Because we'd kind of destroyed the, uh, <laughs> the stained glass windows. All right. Um, uh, so the, uh, the lockbox is um, there's five feet of spikes 
walls on either side, and then the lockbox is just resting in this five foot, you know, past this five foot row of spikes. <clears throat> stony, stony stalagmites. Anyone have a reach more than five feet? Because I can use my spear, maybe? Uh, we have to try and get the lockbox. Yeah, the lockbox is on a bed of spikes five feet away. Does anyone have uh, extra long arms? I, I am literally the only one that can reach that. So I will open it. And I will open it yes. to inspect it first. As you grab the lockbox, you hear it click. Make a sleight of hand check to get your hand out of there ASAP. Oh. Beginning to wish I had taken up a mage hand. Ooh. Oh. It's a mimic. You take seven <clears throat> piercing damage as the, stalag the stalagmites and stalactites crash together like a set of jaws as you trigger the trap. Your arm is impaled, but with your brute bugbear force, you just kind of twist your arm, shatter the stone, and pull out the lockbox. And I'll just hold up and be like, I'm going to open this now, and I'll open it. Uh, it does have a lock on it, but with your big burly bugbear hands, you just sort of push your thumb into the lock until it breaks, and it uh, pops open, and there is uh, the only thing in it is a piece of parchment with a middle finger drawn on it that says, Fuck you, Vashtar. <laughs> um, so to be honest, I'm the only one that, that, oh, that would have seen it. I'm going to the close box and I'll hand it to Vashtar. <laughs> Vashtar's gonna look at going anything useful inside it. Um... You see on the, uh, as you pick up the uh, piece of paper with the middle finger on it and turn it around, you can see uh, your mother's finger with the ring still on it, attached to the back with tape. Oh. I'm going to take the ring in the hand and wrap it up. I'll bury that later. As I freaking put the parchment on... <laughs> the floor and cast fireball on it. Jesus. There's a uh, magical energy that is dispelled as you uh, destroy the parchment and you can hear Dalvazar laughing at you as the parchment burns. Jesus. What is with this guy? So I'm gonna... Should I sense anything arcane about the ring that I got? Um, it is your mother's ring. It is uh, uh, purely decorative, but it has great sentimental uh, value. It's been handed down in your family for about five generations. <sighs> so, yeah, he's just going to... He's going to walk over to the side, kind of like find like a lace or something. And... Actually, no, wait, who has this? Did we get like silk thread? I think that might have been a different campaign. Okay, yeah, never mind that. So I'm uh, just gonna. Well, well I gotta be, I gotta be using something to be stitching this stuff into my kimono. A badass. You're literally surrounded by silkworms. So if Zalatar doesn't have thread, you're surrounded by thread-making creatures. All right. Well, I'm gonna take some of that silk to make like a little necklace so I can put the ring. In it and then put it around my neck. Um, uh, what's hempen? Hemp, hemp, hemp is the stalks of palms. Com oh, sorry. Hemp is plant fibers made into uh, rope and clothing. Like hippies Ooh, make uh, weave like uh, the non-smokable parts of pot plants and weave it into hemp, for example. Uh, but it can be any plant fiber to be considered hemp. Um, you all start uh, hearing uh, mumbling and uh, concerned uh, uh, shouts as the, the moth folk citizens gather around their farm. You can hear people say, 
Are the worms okay? Are the worms okay? They seem okay. What happened? You're An crazy. asshole. Go ahead. Uh, I will yelp and say that uh, the person who was your priest uh, was taken out of commission about a month ago when the elves came by. He was uh, uh, here who's been acting as your priest for the past month. has been elves with a polymorph potion. What's actually a now elf? And an asshole got away. Sete begins to climb out. Do you guys follow follow her? Yep. Yes. Um, the uh, the the trap door is about twenty feet above you. So anyone with a dexterity or strength of plus two or higher can just straight up make that jump. Otherwise, you'll have to roll, or someone will have to lower a rope. Do what? The trapdoor is 20 feet above you. If you have plus two dex or strength, you can straight up jump. Otherwise, someone's going to have to lower a rope for you. I got strength. Uh, what's the dex recognition? Plus two. I got that. I can jump up. All right, Gozar, you kind of just do a little hop, and your long-ass bugbear arms grab the edge, and you just one arm pull yourself up. Vashtar, you're able to... Uh, uh, do a high jump and clear the whole thing and land on your feet. Zalatar, what's your... Do you have a plus two strength or dex? Plus one, my boy. All right. Um, Sete will go ahead and lower a hemp and rope so that you and Maddie can get out. Why, thank you. Uh, you see the fishermen uh, with a uh, concerned look come out of the church and go, Guys, you're going to want to take a look at this. Oh boy. I will go and take a look at this. Oh god. Oh god. Uh, I deactivate Moonbeam at this time. Okay. It might last for like a minute. I don't want any peasants burning alive. Alright. As you are all uh, pulled in, you see the fisherman um, uh, standing next to the uh, podium. Uh, and he says. Uh, he's got his ear to the podium. He's like, I hear somebody inside. All right. None of you rolled high in your, in your perception checks earlier to notice this before, but now someone else is pointing it out to you. There are, uh, as you put your ears towards the podium, you can hear muffled uh, murmurs from inside. All right. Uh, I would like to try to find a way to open this. I will help. All right, do you break it open, pick the lock, or get a saw? Uh, I... we, can o we can always use a trusty hand axe. I slowly start to pull out my great axe. I'd like you to make a, um, a sleight of hand check to destroy the top half of the podium without also destroying the person inside. You, you know, I have a short sword that might be more effective to, like, if I went to the side and kind of went for it uh, over your great axe, which could probably go through it. I right, said hand axe. axe. Make a sleight of hand check to pry open the uh, false door with your short sword. Without accidentally slipping and impaling whoever's inside. It's a much lower yeah, check right? for you, because you're not swinging an axe, but Still got to do it. I'm not confident in our roles. I don't want to kill this person. Hey, it'll be better for you, so. Yeah, yeah plus two to Dex. He'll be fine. He kills your mom instead. Well, I also have a plus one. It hasn't been an hour yet, has it? Because magic. No, it hasn't been an hour yet. Here we fucking go.
Is it bad that I kind of want you to get a nat one? Uh, I had plus one with the freaking thing. It doesn't say. Yeah, I'm assuming it would be close to a, a roll. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, you hear an uh, as you uh you feel the the sword blade go against bone, but not through it. You pry open the door, and you can see Fibroin, the real one, bound and gagged with a head wound that you just gave him. Um, uh, wrestling and mumbling inside, crammed inside the podium. Maddie, heal him real quick as I remove my sword and clean the blade. This is why I didn't want to. I was afraid. What I was afraid of, because our fools are shit. Do you uh, leave him tied up, or do you untie him? He goes, they've got my son tied up in the other room. I will quickly go over there. The door is locked. Do you pick the lock or do you kick it down? Whack. Whack it is. With your, uh, with a solid front kick, Captain America style, the door just flies off of its hinges several feet and then falls over. And you can see in the uh, the corner, there's a man who looks very similar to Fibroin, bound and gagged the exact same way, except his face is covered in bruises and blisters and scratches. He has been beat to shit. I will uh, quickly run over to him, uh, untie him, start saying a small prayer over him. Well, I give him... Uh, my last five uh, of my lay on hands. There's an elven sorcerer! You have to get him! He's killing anyone we, who we, we, we know. We almost had him, but he passed spell and managed to get away. But do not worry. We will get him. Dalvazar, he's trying to summon the brood mother and take over the city. He's trying to bring the drow back from the brink of extinction, and he doesn't care who gets hurt in the process. They've promised him everything. They've promised him money, power, influence. Dalvazar's out of his mind, and they're preying on him. We will solve it. Don't worry. There's a uh, there's a secret trap door in the uh, silk form we uh, we use for storage. They've taken it. I think he's taken it over. We as well and have Why you're kind of lagging, man? I want to destroy the shrine. Dalvazar is in bed with the brood mother. Does Vash start to hear all this? Um, unless you left the room, you can hear this boy shouting at the top of his lungs, trying to exposit and get you guys up to speed. Yeah, Vash Star is going to enter the room, to the room where the kid is at, that, that goes I was talking to, and basically say, makes sense. Crazy attracts crazy. I mean, really, she must be really loose. She's not afraid to use her body to manipulate men to do her bidding. They, uh, okay. they told me their plans because they were trying to get me to help them. I was a, uh, I know a lot about the, uh, the arcane. I, uh, I helped him create some of the scrolls that he's been using. That dimension door... There's a uh, there's a stack of them on a shelf inside of the um uh the under the trapdoor in the silkworm bed. It's gone. Hmm. I wonder why. Yeah. I'm gonna hit Zaltzar over the head. Just say now. You are roboting hardcore, dude. Yeah, we're having trouble understanding half the things you're saying. I heard him knock up me side up the head, but that's about uh, it. Same. Yeah. 
Can I have you log out and log back in, Gozar, from the uh, chat, from the voice chat? Speak and be heard. Okay. Hello? Yes? Bye. Uh, a bit better. Still lagging a little. I'm guessing you said that you smacked both of us upside the head. Uh, probably. Um, uh, so he is, um, uh, he is going to, uh, say that he is happy to offer his, uh, spellcrafting services to you should you go on a mission to get him some materials, but he insists that he stay here with his people and not leave his father, not after everything he's been through. Okay, so that's what he did. He got as I said. All right. Wait, he's he's a priest and he has a kid. Excuse me. Uh, that dude, dude, that. Photismos is the goddess of childbirth. She has no such celibacy clause. Uh, okay. I was like, huh? Excuse me. <laughs> Not me. In payment for saving me, I will craft you one fourth level scroll or lower if you just bring me the ingredients, all for free. Well, what do you need? The ingredients. Depends on the spell you want me to craft. Is there something specific you're looking for? I am going to look something up. Preferably something with either an AoE or a very high damage input. No, you're done with AoEs. The last time you did an AoE, you practically killed I helped. Excuse you. You practically killed us. I did not. We lived, didn't we? Poke smashed Har's nose. No, I'm saying this out of character. I'm saying it in character. Then you're, how can do you know we what I'm Can we not? But I mean, you guys said, like, Conjure Miner Elemental, Charm Monster, Blight, Death War, Dimension Door. You got plenty of options at your disposal. You, uh, uh if you pick a spell, I will give you the uh, list of ingredients, and you can go on a mini quest to go get them, or you can just uh, thank him for the offer and move on to the next town. I'm not sure if anybody heard me. I did. I'm currently looking through uh, the fourth level spell options right now. Oh, I got one. Oh. Hmm. An item distasteful to the target. What the fuck would that be for Delphi's? God damn. So what I'm looking at is banishment. You know what? Fuck it. I'll say the his mother's ring will be that item. <laughs> it would be distasteful to the target. <laughs> I mean, it'd be make it would be kind of a sense of irony because he killed Bastard's mother, okay. and he'll be killing him with a scroll used by the item from his mother. Back.
So Vashtar will go up to the kid and go, I have a quest. I'm all ears, friend. He'll hold out the, he'll take out the ring around his neck, hold it up to him with the, still on the thread, and basically say, can you make a banishment spell using this? Banishment? Oof. That's a powerful spell, but it's definitely something I could manage. Let me look in my, uh, uh, spell book really quick. And you see he pulls out a spell book with every spell, fourth level and lower. It is a massive tome. I am tempted to ask this kid so that way he could look through his book to at least copy a spell to my spell book. This is a uh, public document. It's yours to, pray to browse through if you want. Hell yeah. And unfortunately, because I chose War Mage or War Magic, I do not get the benefit of a discount for spells I learn. Damn. You see the, um, uh, the merchant from earlier come by with the uh, broken axe and be like, you know... I was uh, hoping you'd uh, upset things, and he <laughs> upset a cup more than a couple of things. I believe this is what I promised. I feel like I'm in an empty room with how quiet the others are. So if no one's gonna say anything, I, I'll I'll take that that, that broken. So if you want to banish someone, I'm going to need some materials. I'm going to need um, some uh, brimstone. I'm going to need the uh, cocoon of a moth eater. And I'm going to need one other item. Uh, what would this item be? I'm uh, looking for it. Sorry about the wait. Hmm. This is, uh, written in another language. I'm not 100% sure what it is. God, it's such a large word. Uh, do any of you, uh, read Elvish? It's not my strong suit. I will kind of look at Vash and just like, no Elvish, right? <laughs> I forget, keep forgetting. I have to do push to talk. I basically said I hold out my hand and say I do. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. All right. You see, written in Elvish is the um the heart of a panther. The heart of what? A panther. Zedo, Zedo, come on now. I swear to God, if Vashtar dies, wait, wait, to did you say a fucking pastor, that will be the second Nilo. Yes, he did. That will be the second Nilo you kill with a fucking panther. I don't know what you're talking about. You, you killed Aster Nilo with a panther. Lies, <laughs> slanderous lies. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're accusing me of. Get out of here. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, I would like to say, Kristoff was the first campaign I was ever in with you, and I mean, you kind of did kill off a particular elf with a panther. Why? The entire, the entire time, my level one uh, barbarian cleric friend did nothing. Lie. We're all thumb right now. I'm not going anywhere alone with the party as long as I know there's a panther involved. As, as I hear panther, does a Vashtar's face kind of like go or something? 
biggest this is a different world is what big Vashtar would know than what actually I don't even think Aster would have told Vashtar the whole predicament with the Panther. Aster probably would have kept that to himself. So Vashtar's gonna be like Well Looks like we need all these ingredients and we're gonna have to track down a Panther. That should be fun. It sounds easy enough. What are you afraid of? Seno, kill him for that. Kill him with the panther. Let him do it. Wait, I zoned out. What did he say? He said, oh, it should be easy enough. I mean, you're level one at the time, so... We don't level up until we fucking kill moth eaters. So, and would you look at that? You've need, you need you need a cocoon of a moth eater. Well, doesn't that just kill two birds with one stone? Wait, what? Well, you level up when you kill a moth eater. You need the cocoon of a moth eater. I mean, two birds, one stone. Yeah, but that's if the we can find it before the panther finds us or. We run and into maybe a we and if we can get, get a hold of it, of the show. and if one of us can get a hold of it before the hearts a hold of it, where else Gizriel and Ivy? Well, Ivy is traveling. Gizriel is I don't know what she's doing. He's doing. Yeah, he hasn't been very responsive to my ads. Me either. I wonder why. Did, did you talk to him about what I told you by chance, you know? All right, last big reveal, I promise. Uh, one of the citizens offers you a quest um, to slay the, the flaming moth eater in an active volcano nearby. What? <laughs> oh, God. You took that from mine, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Liar. <laughs> lies. All lies. Okay, so... I honestly don't think we should go adventuring anywhere without the party, because we're three, and we're just three level three players and i literally my max hp is 14. i guarantee i mean oh, master had more uh, hp we're, when we're, Aster had more hp when fucking the panther killed him i guarantee you this panther will kill me in fucking one shot we're, we're talking about hp right so you yeah. know how i start off with the 28 hp right that's my max hp yep um yes yeah, so well i only have eight right now I only have 11, so yeah. We're, we're in no condition to go anywhere right now, but I, even after a long rest, I don't want to go without any more party members because, again, my max is 14. It's just a giant, you know, man-eating monster inside an active volcano. How bad could it be? Is it lit on fire? It is a flaming moth eater, you tell me. Zeno. A lot could go wrong. Wait, no, no. This is also another callback from Curse of Strahd. The Fire Revenant. Oh. <laughs> we are not I mean, going what? back to Barovia. We already handled Barovia. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm having gloom flashbacks. <laughs> I do not want to flashbacks. go through what... I do not want to go through the same shit that both that both Argos and Magnus went through. Come on, you've made my characters suffer enough. Have I? Um, how about Jason where I decide to volunteer for something thinking, oh yeah, it's probably going to be bad, but deciding, oh no, there's a cult that takes faces. 
I love how any audience member listening to this is gonna have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> and just oh, okay, okay. I so, I almost forgot so, we're being recorded. Oh fuck, there's just so, a lot of whoops. So really quick, random people of the internet. So our <clears throat> lovely DM here. First game I was ever with him was we did, we ran the Curse of Strahd campaign. I was just playing this happy-go-lucky Warforged bard. <laughs> Granted, I did kind of help out this, but uh, he was killed by a fire remnant and was replaced with the soul that was trapped in the armor, which was a chaotic evil tiefling rogue that literally had like 10 minutes of glory before he was killed. Then I decided, you know what? We need like a tank or something. So I found the Paladin. Dragonborn Paladin. You know, they're cool. Really, really good guy. Um, to make it easier for myself, I decided to try and kill off everyone that my character was associated with, and the only reason I was ever in Barovia was because he was looking for the killer of his husband. Well, our good friend... <clears throat> Zeno here decided to say, oh, you, you, your, uh, your husband wasn't killed by werewolves. He was killed by this dude here. Oh, and he's an important NPC? Well, oh, you killed him with the sun sword? You know, the weapon you got? Yeah, uh, well, that's a thing that happened now. And so he was depressed the rest of the campaign. You forgot to add that you had to re-kill your uh, late husband. Yeah, I was just about to get to that. Had had to kill my own husband because he was turned to a flesh bone. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Jason, yeah, he had the... I specifically put it in, a back, in his backstory that he saw his parents get killed right in front of him. But apparently his dad survived, so... When he went into the city for a couple and saw his dad being treated like absolute shit. This was an all clerks campaign, so. Uh, yeah, I have some things to call back and I'll okay, keep it please. short myself. Uh, so, our lovely, our friendly Zeno, our DM, he's supposed to be the nice one. Uh, I first started playing with his campaign, Chris Estrade. My character, I think it was like session two, died by a Black Panther. Because I went with uh, the Barbarian to go hunting, and my track he was shit, and he, the Barbarians was better, but he gave us, the Barbarian gave us away being as his personality. I died, but my character got another chance at life by being a soul put into a shrub. So I was a shrub thing for a while until I finally got myself revived. And then later, my character as a child. And then this... Zeno decides to make the child the pinnacle... Like, my, the pinnacle of my torture by having it kidnapped and nearly killed on two occasions. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I can't think of anything else he has done to Aster, my rogue. Oh, no, than... no, no, no. Oh, right, right, right. Remember something else. Remember, after the clerk's campaign, he said, oh, by the way, I would like to uh, get all your character sheets uh, for... Uh, so, uh, they might appear in a campaign later. Like, oh, okay. We all hand him our character sheets. The, the, the next thing that we had was a level 20... was a... Uh, we got to be CR10 monsters, right? So I decided to be the wonderful and, and lovely uh, Aboleth, because, you know, they're fun. Well, <clears throat> turns out that the last group of adventures we had to fight was our clerics, followed by a child that we managed to save, who turned out to be a level 20 monk, by the way. And almost killed all of us. 
Why are you saying all of us? She was nowhere near me. I didn't take any damage either. If anything, part of the shit I did was nearly killing freaking the student's character. <laughs> the Deva. But, but I Michael... Mean, you know, see, he's an amazing kid and you all love him. Yes, he, he is great. He knows how to make drama, emotion, and tension. He, he knows how to make quite the story. But why? Why, Zeno? Please tell me why we're doing these hey. callbacks to, like, certain past sessions with a panther. <laughs> but hey, at least it's not, like, meta. Oh, God. Anyways, is that the end of the session, friendo? Well, we still probably need to make a long rest on whatever we need to do, because honestly, I could say for a fact, I don't want to go after any of these without at least one more party member. Well, I mean, of course, like, take a long rest in the game, in the session here. Next session, we start up where we left off and go on the quest. I would like to actually copy a freaking spell to my spell book, though, through that book. I think Zeta decided to step away for a moment as we were talking. Uh, no, no, I'm talking to him right now. Uh, has anyone listened to our first recording? I have, but I don't know if anybody else has. How many views does it have? Is it up? I I wasn't aware. Of it. Yeah, I've uh, posted all of our sessions, and I'm posting this one in a few minutes. You bastard! I'm, I'm, I've been I've been posting links to all of our. Uh, to all videos on Twitter. By the way, follow us on Twitter. Uh, I'll talk to Zeno about getting uh, those put in the description. Oh, uh, which Twitter? The D6 Twitter? Because I haven't seen any notifications. Of yeah, link, link, it, link it to me again, please. Make uh, me yeah. go back to the D6 chat just to get a link. Gosh. Uh, you. Two followers. I do I have to it. say, it is, uh, I think you guys are my favorite group I've ever had. Because I have ended parties by pulling some of this shit, and you guys all take it in stride. I love this group so much. I mean, we'll we'll remember this as like, oh, come on, man, no, no, no. But yeah, it, your sessions are too fun to not miss. But it's just like if you bring back callbacks, it's like, oh god, no, please. Oh, I love it. It's so much fun. But no, uh, this has been fun. Uh, so I'm assuming everyone's gonna take a long rest, regroup. And attack that fucking volcano. Yeah. Uh, can I? Uh, can I also learn a spell? And it, well, fucking how much is it to fucking? Spell? Yeah, that um, uh, convenient wizard tome is publicly available. Yay. Oh, it's almost as if we only have a single wizard in the class or in the group. <laughs> Yes, let's all of us wizards should copy down all the spells we want. Actually, why does it go from episode one, episode two, then episode three, part two? I uh, stopped. I stopped. Yeah, he... I stopped the recording because we all uh, took like a five minute break. I wasn't going to record five minutes of absolute silence. So why was it part two then? Because I recorded it, stopped, we went on break, and then started recording again, which created a new file. Okay. There, there's two different videos up for it, so that's what he's getting at. Yeah, there's two videos for one no, session. It, no, it, it just goes... Oh, is, is it not the full post I'm looking it's at? One, two, it's one, two, three, says... and three, part two. No, no for me it says one, two, and then part three. Part, uh, uh, episode 3, part 2. I don't see part 1. I'm on the Twitter right now. I'll check this out.
Okay, I'm seeing part one, part two. That should have been both links. I'll have to edit that. All right, uh, so do I need to... What do I get for a spell, or do I need to, like, just uh, pick one? I, I don't know how you're going to roll. Um, I believe with the wizard, you have to copy down the spell. So you pick what spells to add to your spell book. And then I think you have to, for reasons I don't understand, I think you have to spend money to add spells. I think yeah. that's part of the mechanic. Yeah, it is. Uh, I kind of questioned it, too. But mostly, like, I understand, like, copying it. Because I figured, like, oh, you're at a store. Instead of just buying the book, you're probably paying to copy the spell. But... Sure. The, the copy I, is available for free, so if the only reason you need to spend money is to pay someone for the permission, you can waive that fee, because you're doing it for free. Alright, yeah, because I encountered a so, similar so. question with uh, crafting a spell. Like, I was uh, crafting a 5th level dream spell, and it <laughs> required 500 gold gold I did not have in that campaign and I had all the components myself. I had the ink, I had the paper, I had the components needed for it. I had plenty of time and everyone was explained to me like it's a key component to crafting a spell. You need it for like finances like you want to purchase a room or the ingredients or the special ink and paper. I'm like I have all the Things like ink and paper, Maddie would carry for you, so you wouldn't have to buy that. Because she would have brought that because she's a good squire. Actually, that's very convenient for me. So yeah, she is definitely a very good squire. I am going to praise her after school because for losing her. She will gladly accept the praise because all she wants to do is impress you. Because she is like totally geeked out for the people she sees as her heroes. Me and her haven't had any interactions. <laughs> That's probably for the best with how you play your characters. I have yet to flirt with a female. Maybe with this character. Hey, hey, this hey, keyword, yet. I don't know, it depends on how good this brute mother looks. Oh my god. I'm kidding! Um, room. If you try and fuck someone in this campaign, I'm gonna kill you. So I can't I, have a relationship whatsoever? How dare you? I have no problem with him having a relationship. It's just how he handles his uh, flirtation sometimes. Like, every time I mention I have a beta female kicker, it's like, ooh, you've been a female kicker. And I have to tell him, uh, she's already in a relationship. It's like, damn it! I mean, if you want to carouse, <laughs> none of the... If you want to carouse town, none of the moth folk women have ever slept with a hobgoblin before. Oh, yeah. Probably for good reasons, though. To be honest, most people are disgusted by goblins, and uh, there was an extermination campaign not that long ago, so... Yeah, it, it'd be quite the sell. <laughs> oh, God. Repopulate the raid! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That Wait, hold on. Do, do, do we actually need to uh, pull up the, uh, can these two races, uh, breed a child? Oh no, what is even the moth folk on that Hey, to hell with that chart. In my world, anybody can make babies. Okay. Oh, I love yeah. mixed babies. Alright, uh, so, I think I'll choose two spells if that's okay. Uh, shadow, and what would a half hobgoblin, half moth folk baby even look like? I have no fucking clue. No. I That's don't a, want to know. A demon spawn. <laughs> like, would it have bat wings because goblin? Yes. So it'd be like the flying kobold. Probably. I accept this. I will rebuild my legion. <laughs> that is uh, Zalatar's new goal. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
you have all doomed yourself. I wasn't planning on being in a relationship, but now I will put my moves on some ladies. Hey. Sup, ladies? I'm the uh, disgusting goblin spawn that you all think is literally born out of sludge. Want to spend a night with me? Wink. I make mean kimonos. <laughs> that kimono game is too strong. They can't help themselves. I mean, I have, I have the Death Eaters, the Death Moth's wings, and then that she moth, that the plumes of them the, the, around my neck. I'm getting kind of pimping right now. Those are some pretty swagtastic shoulder plumes. Oh my god, why are you kidding Sleep me? with me and I'll make you one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, really quickly, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, people would rather be with me, a bugbear, over you, a hobgoblin. Well, it all depends on the roles. And, that, and uh, that's what I'll leave you guys with, because... Ha! Actually, well, whatever. I was going to tell him that they probably want to be born with an elf because this kingdom is consistent of mothfolk and elves. Yeah, mothfolk and elves are the most common races in this society, but there are no elves uh, aside from the ones uh, other than you and the ones you've murdered. So, you would have much better luck than either of the goblinoids. Wait a minute, but what about the princess? Isn't she classified as... No, no, no. Like, you are currently in Mothfolk Kingdom territory, so if you notice, the only elves that were there were people that you murdered. So, you are currently the only elf in town. Okay, yeah. So, are you saying I have a chance? <laughs> you can try. Roll persuasion. Flirt. Never mind, I can't get counter spell. I don't have third level yet. Damn. So what? Oh, I'll get. I'll get. Fuck! I don't know what to get. Yeah, I do defer to the rules when possible about like how your class works. But if it's too complicated or there's a way to get around that feature, I'll completely accept it. All right. You know what? Fuck it. Acid arrow. Why not? Hell yeah. Where is it? Alright, well that was fun as hell. I'm gonna stop the recording now, and y'all are officially off the air.